Hello everyone. This is Vaishnavi Ranbare. I am currently in third year of engineering. Short introduction about me. I have been member of Philab Sanitizers since 2020. I am mentor and student trainer at Philab. I have participated in Bhutan on Knockdown to Lockdown 2. I am one of the team member in the development of Diagrammetric Analysis Lab. I am also certified by IIT Bombay for HTML, CCPP and Arduino. Now I would like to introduce Honorable Professor R.G. Kaduskar, Director of PVG CRT and GK Partivani Institute of Management. Honorable Professor R.G. Kaduskar did MS in Electronics and Control from Bits Pilani, Rajasthan in 1994. Sir also did ME in ENTC in Government College of Engineering, Pune in 2000. Sir was awarded Adarsha Shikshak Puraskar from Dadaji Vaishimpa and Trust, Kalyan. In 2004, Sir was also awarded Best Technical Assessor for 2006 and 2007 from KPIT Cummins. Sir has received Best Jury Regional Award from Institute of Engineers and Technology, Bangalore in 2013. Sir has special recognition in the Wipro Mission 10X program. Sir has received Cambridge Certified Teacher Trainer Recognition with Outstanding Grade O. Sir has got special recognition from Chief Editor Bioinformatics Journal. Sir was consultant for IDG Microelectronics, Mumbai, for two R&D projects in RFID. Sir has 15 national publications, 8 international publications and 5 IEEE journal. Sir has worked as a resource person in many faculty development activities. Sir has written nine books in engineering. Now I request Honorable Professor R.G. Kaduskar to say a few words. Very good morning to all. Honorable Chairman of Pani Vidyarthigra, Sri Sunil Redekar, Chief Guest of this event, Honorable Dr. Santosh Narona, Principal Investigator, Virtual Labs, IIT Bombay, Respected Sri Pushpadeep Mishra, Project Manager V Labs IIT Bombay, In Charge Principal of the College, Professor Dr. Manoj Taramre, Principals, Deans, Head of Departments of various participating Polytechnic Institutes, Regional Coordinators from MSU Baroda, MIT Maratwada, DY Patil Institutes, Navi Mumbai. Our Institutes, V Lab Regional Coordinator, Professor Mrs. T. S. Kataukar, Professor Manish Nagoshe, Organizing team members from VLAB Nodal Centers, Vidya Lanka Institute of Technology, Mumbai, ASSMS Polytechnic, Pune. On behalf of all the regional coordinators of VLABs and nodal coordinators of VLABs, I, Professor R.G. Kaduskar, on behalf of the VLAB Regional Coordinator of PVG COT and GKPIM, Pune, extend my warm welcome to each one of you present online to this virtual lab outreach workshop. Dear participants, it's my proud privilege and pleasure to brief about our college Pune Vidyarthigra, that is PVG. It is celebrating its 112th glorious years in education and social field. It has a legacy of hardship, pursuit, commitment and determination to serve the society in educational area. PVG COET and GKPION, formerly known as PVG COET, is based on the solid foundation laid down by its great visionary. And we have PVGNs committed to satisfy stakeholders through excellence in engineering education and creating multidisciplinary platforms for overall student development. College was established in the year 1985 with printing engineering program. In subsequent years, additional five engineering programs, namely mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, electronics and telecommunication engineering, information technology and computer engineering were started. College is presently running two postgraduate programs in electrical engineering and printing engineering. Also, college established research centers for three programs in electrical engineering, printing engineering and mechanical engineering. 
All these programs are approved by AICT New Delhi, DT Mumbai and all are affiliated to Savitri Bhai Phule University. In the coming academic year for this 2021-22, college is starting new engineering program in artificial intelligence and data science. As a part of quality education, college received recognition and accreditation from NAC Bangalore twice with the recent accreditation as A grade in second cycle. Four engineering programs of the college are accredited twice by NBA New Delhi. I feel proud to state that college is having recognition from various industries to name few TCS, IBM, KPIT, Texas Instruments, Atlas Copco, Avery Denison, Dassault System France, Omnova Solutions, USA. Also, college is having good interactions and collaborations with reputed organizations such as DRDO, IIT Bombay, Maharashtra Energy Development Agency, MEDA, Maharashtra Non-Conventional Energy Producers Association, All India Federation of Master Printers, that is AIFMP, National Digital Library India, which is an MHRD initiative, Indian Society of Technical Education, IST, Institute of Engineers India, IEI, and IEEE USA. College Training and Placement Cell is doing a great work regarding improving the employability of students. Special MOUs are signed for enhancing the student performances and increasing their employability opportunities. Even individual departments are encouraged to support training and placement activities. By this, they are inculcating soft skills among students from second year onwards, which is an integral part aspect of curriculum. Even programs for interviews, group discussions, are organized by college as well as department independently. I am very happy to mention that our college training and placement still did excellent work by placing more than 290 students from this academic year in spite of COVID-19 pandemic situation and having a very uh, large scale of scarcity of job. A very spacious and well designed library, full equipped facilities and all the books, volumes, international, national level journals, e-journals are there. It is one of the unique feature facility of the college. College is well equipped with setups, infrastructural facilities and various latest trends technologies, best initiatives to strengthen the quality education at all levels. College is having Wi-Fi campus with complete ERP solutions to all the admission process and administrative process. Even college provides foreign language training support from first year itself. Up till now, more than 28 students got placed in Japan through Asia to Japan language program. Thus, college provides training in German, Japanese language along with regular curriculum and is, pl is planning to have additional two more languages, namely Spanish and French. High qualified faculty with ideal blend of experienced senior faculty as well as young teachers is our strength. Faculties are motivated and continuously keeping themselves updated through various faculty development programs. Participating in various workshops, seminars and conferences, presenting papers in highly reputed journals, the supporting staff is also well qualified and motivated. Even non-teaching staff is also more enthusiastic and helpful. College day-to-day -day academic activities as well as disciplinary activities are regularly monitored and maintained with strict norms. Because of wholehearted contribution of college teaching and non-teaching staff, an equal response of our students, their parents and good support and acceptance to our students from the industries, PVG COET and GKPOIOM consistently maintain the quality of education for last so many years. We are all experiencing COVID-19 pandemic situation for more than one and a half year. In spite of this, 
through various collaborations and challenging uh, collaborations and activities under such challenging situation college maintains its academic standard which is possible only with the support from industries and other experts from the industry it is also the active involvement of our participation from our faculties students parents which makes this entire academic program successful in spite of the covid-19 pandemic i wholeheartedly appreciate each one of them for their excellent contribution this event virtual lab outreach workshop organized by pvg coit and gkpoi v labs regional center pune in coordination with virtual labs iit bombay regional centers msc baroda mit marathwada dyp navi mumbai as well as nodal centers vit mumbai and assms polytechnic pune is yet another academic activity conducted for benefit of polytechnic students i am sure that all teaching staff participating from various polytechnic institutes will receive good inputs and will definitely will create interest in them so that they will be the actively associated with the virtual lab development their active participation and creativity will enhance such a development which will be beneficial to the students of polytechnic and other engineering streams with deep sense of appreciation my heartiest congratulations and best wishes to entire organizing team and their office bearers i am confident that this workshop will be successful once again i welcome you all thank you hello everyone my name is tanvi tarkunde and i am a mentor at vlabs digitizers a short introduction about myself i have successfully completed the audit course for virtual labs i have been the member of virtual labs digitizer forum since 2020 i have been certified by iit bombay for html advanced cpp and python 3.4.3 now i would like to introduce professor santosh noronha sir so has obtained his btech in chemical engineering from iit madras and subsequently a phd in biochemical engineering he was then employed as a post doctoral fellow for several years at nih bethesda he has been at iit bombay since 2001 he is a biochemical engineer by training who has evolved multidisciplinary interests he has focused on understanding various metabolic and regulatory aspects of microbial systems towards rationally manipulating their productivity using genetic engineering techniques for production of therapeutics among other activities he has focused on reactor optimization strategies for bioprocesses and on developing algorithms for online adaptive control this has resulted in an open source indigenously developed bioreactor platform this focus on indigenous instrumentation has extended into the creation of low cost virtual laboratory rigs as well as healthcare devices he coordinates development and deployment of virtual labs and mhrd icd project he is also pro professor in charge of the tata center for technology and design an interdisciplinary center with a focus on creating solutions with a high social impact and he also is the coordinator of the health care research consortium at iit bombay which interfaces with major hospitals and research labs in the mumbai area and is now actively engaged in translating several collaborative research efforts into technologies now i would like request sir to say a few words uh inviting me to this event and uh, what i intend to do uh, through what is obviously a long uh, day long event uh, uh, explaining how to go about um, both deploying virtual labs but also creating your own virtual labs i hope to give you a sense of history here as to what's happened and also feel for some of the pedagogy which is important in terms of how you engage and utilize this content in your own uh, specific programs so i hope to share my screen yes sir your screen is visible yes so let me go to full screen mode yeah 
So as was indicated, uh, Virtual Labs is a program um, funded by the Ministry of uh, Human Resources, and it's been something which um, uh, is a counterpart to NPTEL, which all of you, I'm sure, are familiar with. So the intent uh, has been that um, between NPTEL and uh, a collection of interactive uh, simulators called Virtual Labs, that uh, there be enough uh, free content available to students across the country so that they can self-learn. Uh, and there is a, a long-term vision that MHRD has of creating an online open university uh, for which um, uh, there has to be high quality content, um, which is both created but maintained. So before I get into the nitty gritties of uh, virtual lab, uh, we actually need to step back and think about what um, are the reasons we actually carry out lab experiments, uh, in an, especially in an engineering uh, uh, university context. Um, there are two broad reasons to my mind as to why uh, a good experiment uh, works. And, and that's basically because you're either testing a theoretical concept or else you're being made familiar with some real world hardware. So look at the first point there. Um, there's theory that's usually taught to us in some uh, theory course, but invariably we end up seeing the counterpart of that as a lab experiment much later in, in our whole academic uh, program. We typically at IIT Bombay see that corresponding lab experiment one semester after a theory concept is taught. Uh, the problem with that is there's no immediate reinforcement of learning uh, when the theory is taught to you. And uh, in an ideal context, you learn a bit of theory and you immediately test it out in some interactive fashion, ideally at some physical apparatus. And if you can't do that, then you do it at a uh, interactive simulator. But the moment you do these things side by side, you're in a situation where your learning has gone to a different level because you have uh, essentially reinforced uh, uh, the or uh, applicable those theoretical theoretical concepts are. The other scenario is that of uh, training engineers to move out into the real world and play around with the um, uh, real world hardware. And uh, most of us will acknowledge that the lab experiments that we run in our um, uh, uh, typical of various kinds, which uh, allow for people to play around. And collectors of money, the things that we uh, play around with are not um, uh, real world systems. We play with the very robust lab systems, given that um, large numbers of students have to, as batches, undertake these experiments. Uh, at some, uh, in some situations, like for example, with the, the training of pilots or surgeons, there's just no ability to do real lab experiments all the time. You can't be, for example, surgeons cannot be practicing on, uh, on patients or even cadavers all the time, which is where you need simulators. And those simulators, on the other hand, have to be very realistic in design. So you'll realize that most of the physical labs that we undertake as part of our regular curriculum don't address either of these two things in, in a good fashion. And when the virtual labs program was started by MHRA, it was to test out various ways of creating content and looking to see if you could broadly improve the pedagogy of what is being taught and therefore the retention of those concepts and steadily get a generation of students familiar with the hardware as well. Um, just to throw in a few slides about pedagogy, I do believe you'll learn more about this later in the day. Um, most of what uh, students address is at the bottom of this pyramid where most of um, uh, their, uh, their understanding and uh, uh, applications uh, are tested in a lab at test. What you ideally want to do is to uh, have students aim for uh, learning objectives which um, address uh, uh, the highest levels of learning, which is where they get to create something or evaluate something or analyze a unknown situation uh, and then try to uh, 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 you know, better appreciate a set of theoretical concepts. So at IIT Bombay, for example, one of the things we are trying to do is to get to the point where we uh, offer uh, student teams access to a storeroom of hardware components and let them build their own lab experiment from scratch, generate data, analyze the data, and then dismantle the rigs and put them away. And that's the, that's the ideal way of doing it. Obviously, it's a very expensive way of doing it, and it cannot be done for each and every concept that needs to be taught. But in the longer term, that's, that's where lab instruction ought to go. So the problems, of course, with most engineering colleges is that um, we have um, uh, issues with the funding. We have issues with the, the ability to give quality instruction. Uh, equipment typically is not available. If it's available, it's usually doubling up as research equipment. 
um, uh, tends to be expensive. Um, we tend not to use uh, or, or run those experiments which have a dependency on consumables, uh, reagents, and so on. Uh, and we tend to stay away from uh, those kinds of experiments where there are safety issues uh, for the most part. Uh, and, and so therefore, physical labs by design end up being um, uh, you know, imitations of what ought, ought to be actually taught. So when the virtual lab um, uh, challenge was given to us by MHRD approximately 10 years ago now, uh, the basic idea was that you could uh, uh, replace a physical lab um, uh, well, for that matter, you could also attempt a physical lab uh, or a simulator, but all of this would be accessed through the internet. The physical lab concept came about because, um, for example, um, MHRD realized that at the IITs, for, for example, um, the undergraduate labs are being used for three hours in a day in the afternoon between 2 to 5 p.m. And most of our equipment is idle beyond that. And so the question that we were asked is, given the investment in putting up these labs, is there a way for us to make these labs, uh, put these labs online 24 seven and have other students access it, including uh, taking experiments remotely. And of course, as you can imagine, our own students love the idea of uh, taking a lab experiment in the middle of the night, by uh, logging in and then running apparatus and generating data. But the broad idea that we steadily started working on was how to test out uh, various uh, uh, lab delivery concepts, either as um, remote triggered labs, or as simulators. And uh, one of the things you very quickly learn is that a remote triggered lab is an expensive proposition for two reasons. One, at the end of the day, only one student is uh, accessing hardware at a time remotely. Uh, and therefore, you cannot train too many students, even if you make these things available 24 seven. Um, and, and there's also the risk that some of these things uh, can be damaged as apparatus if you let the student uh, try out too many things online which means your design of um, the physical uh, infrastructure has to be very robust to prevent abuse uh, through the internet. Um, the pro programs that we attempted they basically can be broken down into three categories. We looked at how to come up with modeling and simulation labs where the, these are simple interactive animations uh, through which uh, students learn. Then we had measurement-based labs where um, we actually did the sets of physical experiments, collected data sets, and then we started feeding these uh, data sets as if they were simulated data sets through the net. So the advantage here is the student gets to see some realistic data uh, and, and therefore gets to understand some of the inadequacies of um, the theory because the theory always assumes perfect data. Um, and, at our, and the third um, category of things that we tried was uh, looking at uh, what would happen if we remote triggered hardware and uh, let people uh, learn through this model. Uh, to give you a sense of um, what the simulation uh, and animation experiments look like, uh, there's a range of experiments which are created by a range of partners, and you can see that they all have different looks and feel. In the top left, you're trying to see uh, a bioreactor being run, uh, and uh, you get a sense that um, the interfaces are reasonably realistic in how uh, uh, essentially you have to flip different switches and execute different things in the reactor. Um, at the bottom left, uh, you're seeing um, a uh, much simpler uh, uh, protocol in, in a microbiology lab uh, of how to carry out a sequence of steps for transferring organisms from one place uh, or one uh, uh, flask or tube to another. Um, and on the right, you're seeing, uh, uh, again, a, a bit more sophisticated way of getting things done in terms of uh, looking at uh, a fluid mechanics kind of concept. So um, you can see that there, there's a whole uh, emphasis on artwork and interactivity, and uh, also in terms of uh, uh, providing a, 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 a good quality overall experience to students. I'm going to very quickly step through a sequence of slides, giving you a sense of how we went about this for a simple chemical engineering lab. Uh, this uh, is, is a fluid mechanics experiment. And if you look at that panel on the left, it is listing a whole bunch of uh, things that you normally would anyway see in a lab manual. There's the objective of the experiment, there's a theory, there's a procedure, uh, there are some que questions that you would normally ask in a while. Initially, as of uh, initial iteration on virtual labs, just took the physical lab manual and we tried to convert the physical lab experiment into a simulator. Now, one of the things you when you when that happens when you do that is um, uh, you'll realize that um, there are serious limitations to the uh, existing lab manuals, for example, um, when you're online, you really want to get a sense of to what extent people have uh, read the content and are able to do anything. So the pre-test, post-test uh, um, becomes critical for you to design, to gauge how well somebody has understood 
uh, the simulated uh, interaction. Um, the other thing that you uh, that we quickly realized is while a physical experiment may last, um, uh, for example, uh, three hours, and that's a typical lab session in, at IIT Bombay, uh, the interact interactive simulator, of course, can be done in minutes or seconds, which means uh, you are forced into designing a, a lot of activity uh, as a workflow online if you are going to keep uh, students engaged for a window of time. And that forces you to hit them with higher levels of questions, the higher learning that I talked about earlier. Uh, and, and the whole challenge is one of how do you keep uh, people busy for 5 to 15 minutes, uh, which is now the equivalent of a lab session online okay, uh, compared to the three hours. So the three hours, if you think about it, uh, in a fluid mechanics experiment uh, or a heat transfer experiment in engineering is because um, uh, students are waiting for some steady state to arrive, or some measurement to stabilize, um, and so on. And, and um, there's a, a lot of... Um, a wasted time in between as they're sitting around waiting for something to happen. Uh, and you don't have that in an interactive simulated uh, environment. So because the theory is already coded in the background, there are computations which happen immediately and very quickly you arrive at some conclusions. Um, so examples of uh, the pretest, um, forcing people to answer these things before they can move on to the simulator. Um, giving them exposure to the theory itself, uh, not assuming that they've read it somewhere else. Um, this Notice that this is very bare bones in terms of an interface. We're asking people to try to different settings to generate different flow rates, and then from there, uh, uh, so they start things, they watch these things. So th this is an example of a lab experiment, which is not uh, a real world, uh, realistic kind of thing. On the other hand, it is a very, uh, simple uh, uh, interface and what the advantage of that is uh, this is accessible to students on on even a phone and it is not a, a heavy bandwidth heavy kind of experience for a student. Uh, the phone thing becomes important because you've got to appreciate especially in the time of the pandemic now that uh, a large number of students are trying to access content through a phone and not they're not at desktops they're not necessarily at laptops. So some of the stats that um, the virtual labs program is seeing is that approximately 50% of access of virtual labs is via a phone, uh, which means you've got to design user interfaces which are phone friendly, uh, uh, so that people can uh, click buttons, do things, and collect data and so on, and then uh, do further activities with this. Um, so in this case, uh, the, the, there are uh, uh, pressure drops being measured and uh, computed, uh, and um, flow measurements being computed, and so on. So um, that's a simple interactive experience as a standalone experiment. But then when you look at what teachers want, teachers want a complete learning management system, um, which is something like a Moodle um, or a Coursera or an uh, edX kind of interface. Uh, they need to find a way to integrate this into their curriculum and ideally want it as a free tool. Uh, and uh, over the years, what you realize is different uh, instructors are using the interactive content in different ways. Some are directly replacing the physical labs, the afternoon labs, with a collection of virtual labs. Some have started incorporating um, the virtual lab experiments into their uh, modal theory courses itself. So as I said earlier, the best scenario is you teach somebody a little bit of theory and immediately ask them to play around with the virtual lab. So in which case, the virtual lab should be accessible via Moodle itself, uh, right next to where the student sees the theory video. Uh, so the MOOC, the concept of a MOOC itself is now changing into being a highly interactive experience where you see and learn theory and then you immediately play around with an interactive simulator and then you go back and learn even more theory and you keep going this way. Um, all, for all the people who are involved in using this content and um, creating new content, um, it is clear to us that their understanding of the topic improved dramatically. And the basic thing here is if you're trying to keep um, people busy for 15 minutes and you're designing some activities which will keep them busy for 15 minutes, you're forced and you're doing these things online into uh, teaching them some basic theory and then adding some advanced work elements so uh, so that they're kept fully occupied given that all of these computations are nearly instantaneous when they're done through a computer online. Uh, from a student's perspective, obviously um, uh, at IIT Bombay and later on the other colleges, Students were extremely happy to just play around with computers and uh, do lab experiments from a computer interface. Um, physical distances are no longer the issue and uh, the quality of learning has uh, obviously improved. Most importantly, they managed to do this at their own speed and at their own time. Uh, and increasingly, uh, several of them have gotten into a mode where they're evaluating their own learning skills. 
So the MHRD program for the uh, last 10 years has involved 11 partners. It's led um, uh, uh, from a funding perspective by IIT Delhi, but essentially what happened is uh, each of these uh, 11 entities you see here broke off and created a zone around itself. Uh, that's simply because of logistical reasons, given that the mandate was that we create content, but also spread this content and understand the usage of this content. So IIT Bombay, of course, um, as you can imagine, is uh, in uh, charge of the Western region. Uh, despite the fact that there are multiple partners in the program, the, the decision was made that everyone goes through a common front end. So students should not be confused with content coming out of different places. So there's a single login. Uh, uh, all the content for the moment is free. Uh, and the different uh, developers therefore contribute in, into this common pool of content. Um, early on, uh, so towards 2009-10, 10, uh, 10 labs were created uh, or were mandated. We created more. We then got into a phase where we created many more simulators. Um, then the focus shifted from creating content to now asking how do colleges actually get down to using it. So the focus became uh, outreach from uh, 2014 onwards. Uh, but in parallel, uh, more content needed to be created because obviously there were gaps in what was being created relative to the university syllabus. We essentially teamed up with a few of our nodal centers and elevated them into being, into being regional center. Uh, PVG is one. Uh, and we have got some participation from uh, additional institutes in uh, Mumbai, Aurangabad, uh, Delhi. Uh, and we are already at a phase where um, 110 experiments have been developed by the community in, in a very short window of time. Uh, 110 is relative to the 1,400 experiments created over 10 years. So this is the way to go. So the community coming forward to create content, learning what, what it takes to create content, and then solving its own problem is the way to go. And it's something that I would urge you to participate in and explore, uh, not just today, but down the road um, in uh, trying to figure out what you need. And we will be there to help you along the way. So just putting up some uh, list of the names uh, of the experiments which we have created. Um, that you can see they are typically in the computer science and electronics area, but we have things in, in the physics and the biology domains as well. Uh, um, we bring uh, workshops and boot camps, and that's simply because it's easier for us to, um, uh, rather than hold uh, several events online one after another, it's easier to pull a bunch of people together at one place and get them to focus and concentrate, especially when it comes to creating content. Um, so there's now a, a process where uh, there's a high energy kind of event where a number of faculty and students are brought together to try and um, uh, brainstorm and then create content. So we've done this at several places, um, uh, including one recently at UP. But the most recent one, um, in fact, is a, a boot camp that we've run through the lockdown. Um, uh, so which I list at the top. So we've, we've um, well, let me, yeah, so it's over here. We have, we have run an event to the lockdown and uh, attempted to create a large amount of content given that anyway, faculty and students um, during the early part of the lockdown had time on their hands to sit and uh, uh, look at uh, encoding some of the theory as uh, interactive simulators. Uh, there's a team of uh, instructors which are steadily evolved and I need to acknowledge them because these are people who have uh, given a large fraction of their time towards uh, helping others create content. And so they're turning into a group of mentors uh, uh, in, in content creation process. Um, lots of students have uh, also devoted a, a lot of time. And that's, that's something else that um, we have come to realize. We really need to be harnessing the energy that the students have in creating this content. And it's about mentorship, telling them what to do. And usually they go and do a great job of it. Um, the, there are two tracks now of how we do this. One is we, before the boot camps happen, we spend time with the faculty um, you, in webinar mode, uh, bringing them up to speed on the basics of pedagogy and how to essentially, like a, uh, you know, in, like you would in creating a movie, you need to create storyboards. So you literally have to have, force people to visualize what, what the activities inside a virtual lab and you create storyboards and then you get them to essentially put down their thoughts and from there convert it into small tasks which uh, which um, involve coding. 
then separately we work with the students to bring them up to speed on all the technologies which might be relevant for creating interactive simulators for example if you're creating a highly uh, interactive animated content then you need to make be familiar with html5 um we ideally want things uh, access to browsers as a, 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 a as a content and so javascript and uh, typescript become important um then you start putting all of these together the faculty and the students uh, and the way it works you don't uh, necessarily put together students from one department in here what you want is diversity of skill sets in a team so the faculty could be from let's say chemical engineering but the students could be from computer science and so on maybe you have one or two students from chemical engineering as well but between them they have enough skill sets to put down the degree of what has to be created and they also have the coding skills whether it be the uh, uh, browser user interface or whether it is the back um, uh, back end um, uh, simulator itself um, for uh, evaluating the theory uh, online and um, we then get into figuring out how to uh, evaluate uh, students online because one of the challenges here, as you can imagine is how do you great great people who are doing virtual labs um there are challenges also with how to make sure your content can be free some amount of trouble because there are different ways people want it host some people want it uh, running off a central server on a cloud some people want it running on um, a college server and some people um, are happy with the downloading the code and running it on a local software so in the boot camp um, we had a large uh, uh, an effort uh, to reach out to a large number of participants uh, across a large number of cities and um, in some ways this is the way to go um the usage starts for virtual labs as you can imagine and mhrd has been very curious about this it gone through the roof during uh, the pandemic with numbers of uh, people including uh, international uh, because uh, nowhere in the world has there been this quantum of content creation uh, in fact we even had the chinese come in and uh, try to uh, access uh, the virtual labs content created through the mhrd program uh, we have um, a lot of content which is uh, housed on a platform called git and the idea is uh, this is an open source code maintenance platform uh, and the idea is as the people create uh, virtual lab content um, the next team which comes along to create content should not have to learn everything from scratch maybe you can borrow bits and pieces of code uh, and uh, bring them into your own experiment design that uh, improves the thing for the whole community that speeds up development for the whole community so we we've, we've been working on creating uh, platforms for code maintenance and development um so there is a certain process um for how content that's been created goes national so there's at this point uh, hopefully uh, you're clear that there are two programs afoot there is virtual labs which is the content already created by the iits and already available for use and then there's a new content being developed we're, we're calling that vlab dev uh, so when new content gets created it doesn't automatically become uh, accessible to the entire community we actually take it through a review process very systematically through peer reviewers and then um, uh domain uh, reviewers in particular and uh, once uh, we convince that the theory is all correct and um, that uh, the basic bugs have been uh, pulled out we are in a position to now go um, host the content online and one of the major uh, advantages for a college to do this is you get um, uh, international visibility uh, because you get branding of um, the content that you create um the only insistence we have is that this all be uh, free and open source to the student to use um the the team structure that i talked about the faculty with students of uh, different disciplines and so on and um the um, process has been refined so that we are able to condense it down given that people have uh, uh, you know a lot of demands on their time so there's a lot of effort where we train people in advance on various things to webinar mode and then when a physical event uh, happens um uh, it's done typically over a period of 4 to 5 days Uh, where we uh, get down to the creation of content as opposed to teaching them the basics of content creation and we even try to get a review of the content developed uh, happening uh, in real time so that is uh, real time feedback to the teams um and we have started the certifying teams which are um, creating these things um so we are looking at um, uh, uh, different models of uh, fast tracking these things getting colleges to fund their own content uh, creation boot camps uh looking at the universities to get engaged in the mandating the usage of this as was implied earlier aict is going to mandate that uh, 20% of uh, lab experiments be now done virtually and this will continue post the lockdown itself um 
So we're looking at uh, how to bring out better labs. And the moment you create a lab, there are ideas of uh, improving the pedagogy, improving the user experience. It's like a creating a video game. You know, you create one thing, then uh, people, students in particular, are looking for the next most challenging thing to do. So how do you improve the level of content and uh, get more and more people engaged? There's more emphasis on the bootcamp sessions itself and on certification of developers and on the review. Uh, you'll find a lot of this detail at these links, which I'll just quickly flash through, but you'll be able to access this uh, from the slides that I'll leave behind uh, for use later. Um, where is uh, the virtual last program going? Uh, we're looking at an open platform for a large number of developers to contribute and looking at uh, doing more of these events nationally. Technology-wise, we are trying to do this entirely through browser and uh, cloud-based simulation, and um, uh, the phone becomes an important user interface. And uh, we are trying to build technologies which will allow for this to um, integrate into a MOOC platform. So Moodle has um, Moodle is not designed for user virtual labs. Uh, so at IIT Bombay, we have been investing uh, through the Tata Center that I run uh, on a platform called Bodhi Tree, uh, which is a Moodle replacement. And um, we hope to find um, or, or build a functionality to integrate um, uh, virtual labs uh, into the, uh, the uh, Bodhi Tree uh, framework so that uh, students can go back and forth between theory and interactive simulators. Uh, there's going to be improved functionality in terms of um, uh, authentication of students and validating it's the right student taking the experiment. That's because evaluation becomes critical down the road. Uh, how do you get people to start an experiment, pause it, go do something else, come back and resume the experiment? How do you, so how do you have persistence um, in, in this? And we're trying to build in functionalization. And how do you make sure that no two students back to back get the same virtual lab user experience? Because then, for example, when you're grading them, they're just going to cheat. Uh, so how do you therefore randomize uh, the various computations that they are going to have to do? Uh, and how do you give them different settings, random settings, and force them into doing slightly different experiments so that each student has their own uh, unique uh, experience? Um, we're looking at incorporating the best pedagogical uh, practices and uh, frameworks for uh, creation of storyboards. And um, you'll hear more about this. There was brief mention about um, uh, augmented reality uh, by the VC earlier. We're looking at that, but that's at the high end of the spectrum because that's very intensive in terms of uh, what it takes a student to experience. But the other thing that can be done is as more and more students take virtual labs, we start learning a lot from the analytics. So for example, the way a strong uh, uh, student takes a virtual lab is different from the way a weak student uh, takes a virtual lab. A weak student goes back and forth, for example, looking at the theory, coming back and trying something on the simulator, and they waste a lot of time. And if you just simply start paying attention to the time they're taking on an activity, you start learning whether somebody is going down the right track or not. And what that means is you can actually personalize the lab experience to a student. And we're playing around with these uh, as uh, features. You can actually give hints to students as they start taking an experiment and you see them uh, start to struggle. And you don't need a teaching assistant online in, to tell them to do this in real time. Uh, we hope to create more regional centers and recruit more nodal centers. So that helps with the further rollout effort and uh, run more events. And we also expect to uh, start creating content for polytechnic colleges and for the science colleges. Um, a last uh, thought on this. Uh, at IIT Bombay, we started with rollout. We focused on the creation of new simulator labs. We are shifting focus back to the creation of hardware labs as well, because at the end of the day, uh, you cannot be create, uh, teaching a generation of students on how to understand stuff through just simulators. They have, ought to see the real thing at some point. So how do you get them to now look at real operators and how do you design experiences around the real operators? Um, and therefore, how do you create low cost hardware experiments play around with. That's the next generation of things that we hope to engage with. Uh, and many of the kids who get into building their own hardware immediately get excited to work with us on innovation challenges. So there's, we have realized that the reason to get into virtual labs is not simply teaching, but that in the longer term, there's so many great things we can do with the talent that we have around us. To give you the connect details at IIT Bombay, um, um, uh, do get in touch with us if you wish to learn more about uh, the virtual labs and the real labs effort. And the organizers of this event will obviously also be uh, uh, accessible to you if, if you wish to learn more. So Hello everyone. My name is Dhruv Bogaukar. Let me start with my introduction. I am a second year engineering student at PVG COET and GKPIM. I am a mentor at VLabs Digitizers. 
I have been certified by IIT Bombay for the completion of HTML training. I have worked as a resource person for the national event on web development held at PVG COET and GKPIM. Now, I would like to introduce Honorable Professor Urmila Kalchetti Ma'am. Urmila Ma'am completed her M.Tech in Computer Engineering. Talking about Ma'am's professional experience, Ma'am has over 16 years of teaching experience. Ma'am is the Nodal Technical Coordinator for VLAB PVG COET and GKPIM from 2018. Ma'am developed the Virtual Lab Introduction to PHP, which is currently hosted on VLAB Dev Portal. Ma'am has organized various VLAB outreach workshops in association with VLAB IIT Bombay. Ma'am has worked as a resource person for various outreach training workshops for faculty in association with VLAB IIT Bombay in engineering colleges in and around Pune Pravaran Nagar. Now, I would like to request Urmila Ma'am to say a few words. Greetings of the day. I am Mrs. Urmila Kalshakti from PVG's College of Engineering and Technology. I am here to demonstrate you the lab Virtual English Communication Lab. This lab is developed by IIT Guwahati. You can see the URL for this lab on the screen. As far as MSBET syllabus is concerned, the first semester subject English. For this subject, this lab is useful. The practicals mentioned in this subject are mapping in the experiments uh, of this lab. The various practicals based on articles, propositions, then listening skills and writing skills are for these practicals, the experiments in this lab are useful. Let us surf through this lab. We should go to vlabs.iitb.ac.in then in click on labs. Under these uh, various disciplines, you have to go to the physical sciences. In the physical sciences, you can see this lab. Click on this virtual English and communication lab. On the home page, you can see the list of experiments. Out of these experiments, let us first see the most mapping experiment, uh, experiment with your practicals is grammar. All the experiments in this lab have these four options. Theory, procedure, self-evaluation and reference. In theory, uh, what this experiment is about has been explained. Procedure talks about how to use the self-evaluation. Let us click on the self-evaluation. Here the list of exercises have been mentioned. The exercises are on adjectives, propositions, articles and correcting the errors in the English sentences. Let us go through any one of the exercises. Now this exercise is based on the articles. You can see that, uh, that there are 10 questions. One question has been displayed. Just click the correct option for this. The correct article I am choosing is A. You can see that if the answer is correct or wrong. Clicking on this next button, you will be able to see the next question. If you want to see all the questions at a time, just click on show all questions. You will see the list of the questions at once. Let us go to the next experiment. The other exercises in this grammar experiment are very similar to the one that we have seen now. We can see now next two experiments like business communication and technical communication. These two experiments are useful for improving writing skills of students. Let us go to the business communication. Click on the self-evaluation. There, uh, we'll go through the third exercise. Click on this exercise. You can see that in the left column, there are negotiation strategies listed out. And in the right column, we have various business situations. We have to just match the correct options. To match it, an option from the right column, you have to drag it to the left in front of any the suitable option from the left. So I'm just doing it randomly. You can check if your mapping is correct. It is showing that this mapping is wrong. So you can ask students to go ahead to go on trying and getting the correct options so as to get the improvement. Now in the technical communication, Click 
on the self evaluation we'll see the second experiment second exercise which is concise equivalent here there are seven questions a group of words has uh, have been given and for this group of words we can use a single word let me type a word amend now i can check if it is correct or not yeah it is correct the objective here is instead of using four words like this i can just simply use a word amend in my writing or in my uh, talking so this way there are seven questions similar to the previous experiment exercise i can click on or show all questions to see all the questions at once the other exercises also you can make use of from this technical communication experiment we can also have an experiment named listening skills okay in that now go to the self evaluation here you can see the list of passages all of these passages are audio files just click on listen the audio file will run nirupama quickly adapted herself to the routine life of so you can ask students to listen to these audio files and then based on this the questions are being asked here click on solve questions you will see the questions these questions are based on the passage which has been just listened by the students so this way you can use it for improving the listening skills of the students all these uh, among all these experiments uh, most of the experiments are mapped in one or the other way to the topics in your subject you can see there is an experiment for vocabulary there is an experiment for reading and comprehension as well so you can make use of all of these experiments let me tell you about the way that we can use these experiments uh, while teaching this subject there are three ways that i come up with like you can you make use of the first way is ict tool you can use it as an ict tool while teaching the subject the another way is you can make uh, use of it as an assessment tool you can ask students for uh, sharing their screenshots of their answers to the exercises and accordingly you can evaluate them you can frame the active learning strategies on uh, various experiments uh, i have listed a few listed out few of them one is game based learning treat an experiment as a game ask students to do the exercise the scores will be uh, available to you and then you can declare the winners for this game another is rapid fire questions you, uh, as we have seen just now that one question at a time so you can ask students one question at a time and uh, by sharing your screen and then you can ask them to share their answers and you can have the uh, clicking on the next questions you can have this rapid fire questions next two uh, active learning strategies are probably on the experiments like learning listening skills we have seen listening skills on this experiment you can frame these active learning strategies so list of active learning strategies is not limited you can have your own active learning strategy with the help of this particular lab thank you hello everyone my name is tanvi tarkunde and i am a mentor at we labs digitizers i have successfully completed audit course for virtual labs i have been the member of virtual lab digitizer forum since 2000 I have been certified by IIT Bombay for HTML, Advanced CPP, and Python 3.4.3. Now I would like to introduce Professor Mrs. Ranjita Ghosh, ma'am. She is an assistant professor at PVG COET and GKPM Pune. She has been working as assistant professor in the Engineering Science Department of PVG COET and GKPM Pune since 2009. She has a total teaching experience of 12 years. She has completed MSc in Physics in 2004. She has successfully qualified GATE in 2006 and NET in June 2007 and December 2000. She has also been awarded gold medal as University Topper in MSc and also in BSc Physics honors. 
she has authored book on engineering physics for nagpur university she has also published a paper in the international conference her areas of research are environmental science and evaporative cooling she has also handled various portfolios like first year virtual lab coordinator anti ragging coordinator first year feedback coordinator student induction program coordinator eco club and science forum coordinator kirloskar vasundara coordinator now i would like ranjita ma'am to say a few words hello everyone today we will see how to perform physics experiment by using the lab so i'm going to explain two experiments so the first one is use of p n junction diode to draw forward bias and reverse bias by the characteristic so once we reach to this page now we have to go to the discipline or select the discipline electronics and communication now under this electronics and some communication there are a lot many labs our experiment belongs to basic electronics lab and in basic electronics lab this is the direct link to perform the experiment now let us see where the second experiment is so second experiment is on projectile motion this belongs to vlabs.iitb.ac.in now here we have disciplines physical sciences and in this discipline we have a lab called virtual advanced mechanics lab the direct link to perform this experiment is this now let us perform the first experiment so the first experiment is from vlab.co.in we will reach to this page scroll down then we will go to this electronics and communication now as i told you there are a lot of labs available here our experiment belongs to basic electronics lab so now once we click basic electronics lab we will get this page now we have to select list of experiment so we can see there are a lot many experiments so we have to perform this one bi characteristic of the diode so once i click on bi characteristic of the diode i can get different options over here so the first tab is theory here the theory of this experiment is very well explained now the next tab is procedure tab detail of performing experiment step by step is given over here so it will be very easy for the student to perform the experiment once they read out this now the next part let us see how to perform the experiment that is on simulation now once i click the simulation i can get different options so forward bias uh, silicon diode reverse bias silicon diode forward bias germanium diode reverse bias germanium diode so here silicon diode and germanium diode both the options are available so student can perform the experiment for both they can compare so let us perform the forward bias silicon diode so now this is the page Here, first thing we need to select the diode here. So as soon as I select the diode, I can get the barrier potential reflected here. Now the next thing, let's complete the connection here. So this is the ammeter which has to be connected in series with the circuit. This is the voltmeter which is to be connected in parallel with the circuit. And uh, let us complete the circuit diagram. Once the circuit diagram is complete, let us check whether this connection is correct or not. So I will click here on check connection option. So here message reflected is right connection. That means our connection is right. Now if there is a mistake by chance in the connection, here wrong connection will be reflected. In that case, we need to select on delete connection and redo the connection. So once the connection is correct, now our setup is ready to perform the experiment. So the first thing we need to do, we need to change the resistance value over here. Once the resistance is set throughout the experiment, we are not going to change it. The next step, the second part of the experiment, we will change this DC voltage and corresponding current and va voltage value from this ammeter and voltmeter to be noted down here in the experimental table. So now let us change this value. So once I change this value, I will click here on the tab Add to Table. So once I click it, the value of current and voltage is reflected on this table. Now I further change the DC voltage. So corresponding current and voltage 
to be noted down in the experimental table as I click on add to table. So I just go on varying the DC voltage and note down this value by clicking the add to table option to the experimental table. Now once the reading is over, I click here on plot. This will give me the plot of my reading. So if I take the printout of this page, I will click this print option and this print option can be used later on also while the submission by the student. Now let us see the next part how to perform. So the, now the next part is the reverse bias silicon diode. So I just click on this. I will get just similar kind of page. I will follow the procedure. Select the diode. So reverse voltage is being reflected here. I will change the resistance. And now I will change the DC voltage and corresponding current and voltage through this diode is been noted here in the table. Exactly in the same manner, go on changing the value of the DC voltage and note down the value in the table. So we need to do till the end. So now once the value, value is complete, the table is complete, now we have to click on plot option. Again in a similar manner, I will guess the reverse bias curve. So in this way, we can perform the first experiment. We can give different options to the student. They can perform with the different diode options here and they can compare the characteristic of these diode. Now let us see, perform the second experiment. So second experiment that is on projectile motion that belongs to vlabs.iitb.ac.in. So once we scroll down, I can see the different disciplines, physical sciences, where our experiment belongs to. Now in this physical sciences, virtual advanced mechanics lab. So I'm just going to click it. Now here you can see this is our projectile motion. Okay, once we click on projectile motion, I will get this page again, like previous case, I am getting the theory in detail here under the theory tab. Procedure tab will explain the procedure of the experiment in very much detail. Now the next tab is self-evaluation. So here in the self-evaluation tab, there are five objective questions. So it is expected that once the student understood this theory, they can able to answer this question. So this is a self-evaluation kind of tab. Now the next part is the simulation. So once we click on simulation, You will get the simulator, which is available for us to perform the experiment. So now I will just maximize the screen. So this is how the setup looks like. Now we can see choose environment options makes us available to perform the experiment for different value of the acceleration due to gravity. So student can compare the effect of gravity on the motion of the projectile as well. Now the other parameters are velocity, angle of projection and canon height. Now this simulation helps us to understand how the change in the velocity will affect the motion of the projectile, how the angle of projection or canon height will affect the projectile motion. Now let us see. So first thing we will set the projection angle to let us say 20 degree. Velocity, initial velocity is 35. Now I click on this fire. So I can see how this cannonball is moving. Now if I go on changing this value of the velocity and click on fire, I can get the idea how the motion of the projectile got changed. So for every reading, every option, I'm getting a different line, which will help us to understand how the velocity affects the motion of the projectiles. If I want to show the result, that is time of flight, maximum height and horizontal range. So I can click on show value of show result option. And as I change the velocity over here, so corresponding time of flight, maximum height and horizontal range can be noted down from this option. So this is one way by changing the velocity, I can measure all this. Now let us see, we can opt for the next option that is change of projectile motion. 
projection angle of projection so i will erase all this and then i now i will change the angle of projection to note down this and so i can see what is the effect over here so by changing the different different value of angle of projection i can get the projectile path over here corresponding time and maximum height and horizontal range will be easily noted down from this show result column likewise i can also see how the height will create a difference in the path of the projectile so as we go on changing the height we can see the range of the projectile goes on increasing so in this way the student can able to understand how these parameter affect the motion of the projectile so this is a very good uh, experiment where the student can able to see how to perform the different experiment in a different way they can compare the values now uh, i have explained both the experiment i hope this will help us to perform the experiment using v lab now thank you thank you so much hello all i am sahil morankar and i again welcome you to this national level event i am head of v labs digitizers forum i am also project manager and mentor in v labs i was team leader of robotics in medicine lab and developer in strength of materials lab also i was the senior trainer in nationwide lockdown the lockdown bootathon organized by virtual labs iit bomb being a member of v labs digitizer forum since 2018 i have completed the audit course along with certifications for html c++ arduino and python by spoken tutorial project iit bomb today i would like to introduce professor anil kumar badgare sir a masters degree holder from bharti vidyapeeth university pune currently sir is working as assistant professor in computer engineering department at pune vidyarthi gross college of engineering and technology and gk pate vani college of management pune having a total of 14 years of teaching experience sir was the faculty for virtual laboratory develop for computer graphics which has been added on v labs national portal of iit bomb seeing the potential of this lab the virtual laboratory developed for computer graphics has been added in spbu syllabus for 2019 course which made all of us proud now i would like to ask badgare sir to address and guide you all. thank you a warm welcome to all of you today i am going to discuss the virtual lab for the subject computer graphics under discipline computer science and engineering as per maharashtra state board of technical educations under the program name computer engineering for the semester 3 we have a computer graphics subject for the same subject the list of experiment that maps with the given virtual lab has been available on this official website following are the suggested v lab experiment which can directly map with the syllabus so the first one is implement following algorithm to draw a line using dda then a bresenham line drawing algorithm then bresenham circle algorithm then a different transformation then uh, we can have even odd method to check the seed point of a polygon in today's session i will be explaining implement the following algorithm to draw a line using dda to access the different experiment we have official website vlabs.iitb.ac.in click on to vlabs dev here you will be having explore tab under explore tab click on upload labs now here you will be able to see the subject computer graphics under the discipline computer science and engineering so i will click on computer graphics subject 
to know the various list of experiment that are available click on to the experiment so these are the set of experiment so some of the experiment directly maps with the syllabus now i will start to explain digital differential analyzer line drawing algorithm so as we are aware that we can draw the line either using dda or a bresena so it is expected that when you are we are going to draw a line student need to know the basic theory how to draw a line whether it is gentle slope or it is sharp slope once they are aware of the basic theory we can go with the pre test where they are expected to answer the five different questions based on the increment either along x axis or along y axis so here let's discuss with first question if the vertical line has to be drawn then should we increment along x direction so i'll mark it as a pause for a vertical line it's false so for rest of the question i am randomly marking as a true or false if i click on to the submit quiz the questions which are wrong will be shown with the red color and if the question is a uh, correct then it will be having a black color so here student will be able to see that how many questions has been attempted correct and how many question goes wrong so this will be their score out of 5 now i will be correcting those options i'll try to submit the quiz again once the student are able to see that all the five out of five marks has been availed by the student then they can go with the procedure in a procedure students are expected to know the basic algorithm how the dta algorithm works to calculate the lane to calculate the increment and then repeat it once they are aware with the particular procedure the most important part of the virtual lab is a simulation in a simulation we have a five different set of question for a different different experiment now for this one we have a question like draw a line from 2,3 to 12,8 using dda line drawing algorithm so i'll clear the canvas first so that when you are we are going to run the particular canvas for the next question it has to be cleared so we want to rasterize this particular line 2,3 to 12,8 so if we know the dda line drawing algorithm we can find out the lane we can find out the increment so based on that value we will be getting certain new x coordinate and new y coordinate so this will be what my first x1 y1 and uh, the last x1 y x2 y2 will be 12,8 i am randomly selecting the points which lies in between those starting and ending point now these are the different point which i have plotted now to check out whether our calculation is correct or not we need to click on check coordinate option so i'll click on check coordinate so if your calculation is correct those particular points will be marked using the green color if your calculation is wrong those points will be marked as a red color so here a uh, 5 6 6,6 7 7 are not a part of a line so hence they have been highlighted with a red color i will again clear the canvas now if i click the point 2 3 the next point is 3 3 4 4 i am pointing out those particular point which has been calculated with the help of a dda algorithm once we have the correct calculation if i click on to check coordinates we will be able to see that all those particular point which i have clicked have been marked with the green color so all these coordinates will be highlighted towards a right hand side table now moving to the question number 5 i'll clear the canvas question number 5 the point is 
10 so i will click on to the point 7 comma 10 this is the starting point 7 comma 10 the ending point is 9 comma 1 this will be the ending point so what we will do we will follow the algorithmic step of a dta we will calculate the new x and y values successively and we will match out whether the calculation that we have with us is matching with the points shown in a grid so here all these particular points 7 10 8 9 8 8 8 7 will be highlighted so this is what the expected coordinate that lies on to the line and same has been shown towards a right hand side so in this case students are expected to solve the all five questions and check out their appropriate answer once they have done with all the five examples they can go with the post test now in case of a post test as students are already aware of the algorithm now it is expected that they should able to solve the problem and that they should able to check out whether the point lies onto the line or not so the post test is just the evaluation example using the DTA algorithm I am randomly picking out the points ok I will submit the quiz ok now here again it is like a pre-test if you observe the points which lies on to the specific line and if it is correct will be written with the black color and if our answer is wrong will be highlighted with the red color so it is expected that student need to go with all the five set of questions and they have to check out the answers by submitting the quiz unless they are not having five out of five marks so here i'll just correct it the line 10 10 comma 5 10 will be rasterized which point will lie on the line so obviously it will be uh, having only x increment no y increment so i will map the option number d 6 comma 10 now i'll submit the quiz so here your score will be changed to 5 out of 5 so in this way student will get awareness about the basic theory behind the particular experiment the pre-test what is expected to know before starting with the particular experiment the procedure that is algorithm simulation post test and the references in a same way we will be able to demonstrate all these eight number of experiment so if i click for even or method it will be having a grid again it will be having a pre-test will be having the procedure will be having simulation with the five set of questions will be having the post test with the five set of questions so likewise student will be able to know the answer for each and every questions and they can evaluate whether they understood the even or method or not thank you all Hello, I am Shrauni, currently a third year engineering student at PVGCOET and GK Patiwani College of Management, Pune. I am a member of VLAB Digitizers Forum since 2020. I am a technical head and mentor at VLAB. I have developed experiments in robotics and medicine lab. I am a junior trainer at Bootathon Knockdown the Lockdown 2, organized by Virtual Labs IIT Bombay. I have been certified for HTML, CPP, C and Arduino by Spoken Tutorials, IIT Bombay. Now, I would like to introduce Professor Mrs. Sangeeta Bauker Madam. Sangeeta Madam is Assistant Professor in PVG COET and GK Patiwani College of Management, Pune. She, is a, uh, she has a total teaching experience of 12 years. She has completed his ME in uh, Signal Processing in 2013. She has published two papers in international journals. Her research area include digital design, embedded system, handling, uh, handling various portfolios such as virtual lab, 
कोऑर्डिनेटर मेंटर कोऑर्डिनेटर एग्जाम कोऑर्डिनेटर गर्ल एम्पावरमेंट सेल कोऑर्डिनेटर ओवर टू यू संगीता मैम थैंक यू हेलो एवरीवन I'm Samita Balkar from PBG COIT and GKPI in Pune. I'm working as a virtual lab coordinator in the NTC department. Today, I'm going to explore this electronics and telecommunication discipline lab, which expert name is a microcontroller interface with display devices. It is a microcontroller and application lab developed by Vivekanand Education Society's Institute of Technology. Object mapping in MSBTE. is as follows course code 22532 program code electronics engineering program group program code is uh, so this d e e j e t e n e x e q i c and i c then semester fifth course title is embedded systems we can use this lab as a uh, ict tools uh, so for assessment of understanding then also for that simulation of various interfacing circuits Now we'll explore the lab. Go to the vlabs.iitb.ac.in. Okay, you'll see this page here. Click on Explore Labs. Click on Upload Labs. Here you can see the different disciplines and their respective labs. Just click on the Atypical Microcontroller Lab. See, so this is Atypical Microcontroller and Applications. lab here user uh, users will be able to write a program and see the output across the peripherals interface with 8051 microcontroller so to explore this lab click on explore see here this is the list of different experiments like microcontroller interface with display devices microcontroller interface with adc and dac microcontroller interface with dc motor so just click on this first experiment which is microcontroller interfaced with display devices here the uh, the left side see these are the different tabs are there aim theory pre test procedure simulation post test and references so click on the aim here aim of the experiment is given interfacing of 8015 microcontroller with various display devices then about experiment see this is the experiment related to that interfacing of led and seven segment display after completing this program this uh, experiment student will be able to understand interfacing of 8015 and different display devices and also students are able to write their own assembly language program for 8015 microcontroller okay then click on theory tab in this theory all that related theory is given in this tab see as this experiment is divided into two part led interfacing and seven segment display interfacing so in first part all about that led the uh, symbol connection diagrams and interfacing diagrams are given and in second part the all about the seven segment display is given okay see there are two type of connections common cathode and common anode so this is the theory related to that seven segment display okay so student can export this information also the some uh, pdf files are also provided here student can also export these files and they can get the more information about the instruction set hardware and all about that it effect your microcontroller then click on the pre test pre test here uh, to check the prerequisites of this experiment student can solve this pre test and we can click on evaluate so like that he will get the answers of this okay then procedure in procedure tab see the step wise and with the screenshot all that steps are get explained okay we need to refer this procedure to simulate the program okay so go to the simulator section to perform an experiment so this simulator window get open then read all the instruction popping up from simulator window carefully okay so this window get pop up so we need to read this carefully and click on okay then third click on show sample button provided below understand the interfacing diagram and sample code okay so this sample program is available here just click here so this window get pop up and here student need to understand the interfacing diagram and this sample code we can copy this sample code and we can paste this sample code in the text editor okay so we can test uh, test we can test the same program here 
okay so or we can write our own assembly language program also in the text editor then select the appropriate port according to your pro code so which port we have used in that code uh, in the code that we need to select here okay then to check the syntax error on each line debug option is provided debug option is there to check the syntax error then if you your code output is depending on timing sequence please use debugging function it will show changes in output step by step and to get the final output run the simulator after debugging and assembling the code with no error okay so run is there so where the complete program will get executed and will get the result <coughs> Here, solve the test questions given below the simulator section. After the simulation uh, section, see there are some questions are there. Student so can solve that questions and write down the conclusion and then submit the answers. Okay. After submitting, he will uh, that uh, PDF file is get generated that here uh, student can save uh, with their role number and external name and they can upload this as a part of practical assignment. <coughs> then go to the simulation here simulation is there simulation window is there here you can see the pin diagram then memory part then peripheral and here this is the text editor area where after that we need to click on this is the uh, run and debug buttons are there reset button is there okay now click on show sample display see this window get pop up here student need to understand the interfacing diagram and this sample program is also there so we can copy and paste this program okay and uh, in this interfacing diagram all the basic connections are uh, given reset connection crystal connection ground vcc and that led connection on the same pop-up window see this seven segment program is there so first we'll perform this and then we'll go for this experiment okay so i have copied the code just paste this here okay now we can debug the code the first line is set port p 1.0 so port we need to see the click on debug port p 1.0 led close then p 2.6 led close then that p 2.6 led clears because clear p 2.6 instruction is there then debug p 1.0 so it will clear the p 1.0 also we can modify the p numbers see like uh, if you see the p number instead of p1 i can so we can modify this code and we can also debug so here p 0.0 led on p 2.6 on then p 2.6 led clear p 0.0 led clear so like that we can modify and uh, we can test the our assembly language program okay then uh, see show sample program we will go to the next part see in the next part this is the seven segment interfacing diagram is there all basic connections are there shown also the seven segment connection is shown in this and this is the sample program which we can copy and paste here and we can debug the program see here port 0 is uh, get used in the code so we need to ensure that here port 0 is get selected if any other port is there we need to select that respective port so i'll keep this port 0 then click on debug see here this is the code related to that 7e is the code required to display 0 on the 7 segment display now how to find out this code that all about this uh, code information is given in the theory tab so student need to explore that and they need to understand the program okay so this is the program now we can just click on debug 0 1 2 3 4 5 0 8 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 and 14 15 that f is there again 0 1 2 so also i can change the port so i will just change the few port like a one only few instructions i am changing so port 1 okay port 1 if you want to uh, change the port you can change it okay so now we'll just also we need to change this port 1 okay and we'll debug it yes 0 1 2 3 
Okay. So next instruction we cannot observe because for that we need to change the port like this. So now debug it. Yes. Now you can see the next results. So like that we can check the simulation here. So print simulation window we can take the printout of this whatever the program return the pin diagram everything this things are available here that student can take the printout and they can submit as a part of practical assignment. Okay. Then test is there based on this uh, practical. This test is there. So we need to uh, read all this instruction carefully. See, these are the types of uh, questions, conceptual problem solving, analytical questions are there. They can solve the test, write the conclusion, and submit the answer. After submitting the answer, PDF is get generated, and they can submit that PDF with their own numbers as a part of practical assignment. After that, they can solve the post test. Okay, and they need to submit this. Okay and references tab is there in that book references and website references are given student can explore this references to get the more knowledge about this experiment okay thank you thank you so much for patience listening Hello everyone, I am Mehak Gupta, a final year engineering student at PVG COET and a mentor at VLabs Digitizers. I am a member of Students Club PVG COET. I have also served as a junior mentor in Bootathon which was held in May 2020. I have also been into the development of Heat Transfer Lab and 2-axis robot envelope. I have been certified by IIT Bombay for C++, Arduino and Advanced CPP. I have qualified Bootathon 2.0 and also completed the audit course of virtual labs. Today, we have with us Professor Mrs. Priya Deshpande Ma'am. Ma'am is currently working as an assistant professor in Electronics and Telecommunication Department of PVG COET and GKPIM Pune since 2008. She has a total teaching experience of 14 years. Ma'am has completed her ME in Signal Processing in 2011. She has published two papers in the National Conference and one paper in the International Conference. Her research areas include Digital Design, VLSI Design and Technology. She has handled various portfolios such as Virtual Lab Coordinator, Training and Placement Coordinator, Student Internships Coordinator, Telecommunication Engineering Student Association Coordinator, Assistant Students Development Officer, Kirlos Karvasundra Coordinator, Girls Empowerment and Development Coordinator. Now, I would like to request ma'am to say a few words. Hello everyone. I am Professor Mrs. Priya Deshpande from PVG COET and GK Patewani Institute of Management, Pune. I work as an assistant professor in ENTC department and handle the portfolio of virtual lab coordinator. So today I will be demonstrating the digital electronics lab. I will be demonstrating two experiments, verification and interpretation of the truth table of basic and universal gates and construction of half and full ladder using XOR and NAND gates and verification of its operation. So this is the digital electronics lab developed by IITR. So below is the link to visit the lab. So this is the subject mapping in MSBTE. This map lab is mapped to the course title Digital Techniques with the course code 22320 and it matches with the program Electronic Engineering Program Group and the subject is in the third semester of the syllabus. <coughs> So this is how you can use this lab. So as in teaching learning process, you can use this lab as an ICT tool. So you can simulate various combinational and sequential digital circuit through the experiments given in the lab. You can assess the performance of the student, understanding of the students through the pre-test and the post-test MCQ quiz which are posted in the experiments. So now we will go to the lab and demonstrate 
the experiment. So, you have to visit the website vlabs.iitb.ac.in so that it opens the home page of IIT Bombay where you have to select vlabs dev tab then you select the explore labs option and select the approved labs so in the approved labs you find the list of disciplines and the corresponding virtual labs so i will be selecting the digital electronics lab from the electrical engineering so click on that so it will direct to the digital electronics lab developed by iitr home page on the left hand side you see the introduction objective list of experiment target audience course alignment and the feedback so introduction gives you the welcome message objective of this lab is to learn and understand the basic concepts of digital electronics if you go to the list of experiments you will find total 12 number of experiments starting with the basic study of gates towards the implementation of the combinational and the sequential logic circuits in the digital techniques so i will be selecting the first experiment and the second experiment for my demonstration so i click on the verification and interpretation of the basic and universal gates so on the left hand side you will find the aim theory pre-test procedure simulation post tests references and the feedback so aim is the aim of the experiment to verify and interpret the logic and truth table for various gates then if you click on the theory tab you will find the detailed theory about all the basic gates their truth tables and their implementation using rtl diode and register logic so students can study the theory of all the basic and universal gates in the theory tab pre-test so this is a pre-test conducted to be conducted before the simulation to check the prerequisite understanding of the students so there are total five questions so i will click on the random answers from the given options and i submit the quiz so here the quiz is evaluated right now i have selected random so i am getting a score of zero so students understanding prerequisite understanding can be checked using this pretest. in the procedure tab you will find how to simulate the gates and truth table by using the simulator one and simulator Two. so follow these steps so as to perform the simulation so next i go to the simulation tab where you can see the simulation experiments for all the basic gates and the universal gates so i will demonstrate the and gate <coughs> so on this top corner you can see the simulator one and simulator two so this is the rtl circuit for the and gate so here you can see this battery so that is to be connected to the circuit so if i connect if i click on the battery the battery gets connected to my circuit so this is the switch one which connects the battery to the rest of the circuit so i will make this switch on so that battery supply reaches to the switch two and switch three so switch two and switch three they are used to provide the binary inputs to the transistors so as to verify the truth table of the and gate so on switch indicates 1 off switch indicates 0 at the output we have the led on led indicates 1 off led indicates 0 so right now both the switches are in 0 0 position off position so the output is also 0 indicated by off led i make one switch on again the output is off led is off because this is an and gate and gate gives output one only when both inputs are one so i will change the output i will change the input switch to one zero still i am not getting the output and now i change 
both the switches to one one i will make more switches on and here you can see the led is glowing indicating that for both input combinations one one the output is equal to one that verifies the experiment to perform and get on the kit so this is the simulator one so you can go to the simulator two to check the truth table so here in the inputs you have to enter the value and in the output you have to enter the expected output so if i enter a one here a zero here my expected output is zero so if i write a zero and check then in the truth table i can get the remark as correct but instead if i write a one and check then in the truth table you will see that i am getting the incorrect output so ab01 the output should be 0 but if i have write i have written 1 then when i check this i am getting the incorrect result so you can check all the binary combinations and the expected outputs and you can have the entry in the truth table you can print this and you can save this later so as to get the entire details of the experiment so this is the first experiment now we'll go to the second experiment uh, but before that uh, let me go to the simulation tab again so you can simulate or not none nor gate xor gate x nor gate you can explore all these gates once you do the simulation there is a post test option so understanding of the students about the experiment and the related theory is checked by using this post test so student can select the options and submit the quiz and the quiz gets evaluated then you have the references where you will find the list of the books and some web resources that you can refer for the study and then you have the feedback where you can share your ex experience about performing the experiments in the lab to the virtual labs team so now we'll go to the second experiment verification of the truth table of half and full adder so the format is same as that of the half adder uh, as that of the gate experiment so aim of the experiment is defined then the theory of the half adder and full adder with their truth table their equations for sum and carry is all explained in the theory section so the forming of half adder and full adder using nand gates and nor gates and their realization using some boolean expressions the entire theory is explained in the theory section of this experiment then you have the pre-test that is testing the understanding of the students before performing the experiment then the procedure two simulators are given simulator one and the simulator two so detailed procedure can be read and the experiment can be simulated accordingly so now i will go to the simulation tab so in simulation tab you find the half adder and the full adder so now i click on the half adder so here is the circuit for the half adder and it's here you can see the entries for the truth table as i said earlier the supply switch on indicates one switch off indicates zero led on indicates one led off indicates zero so first you need to make the supply on so that ic will be getting the supply at the pin number 14 so this is input a input b so you have to verify the truth table for half adder for sum and carry so right now both switches are off so the output is sum 0 and carry 0 so i can add that entry in the truth table now i change 0 1 i will make switch b on so you can see sum is equal to 1 carry is equal to 0 add in the option in the truth table so now i will make input 1 0 and you can see again the sum is 1 carry is equal to 0 now i make both inputs i will add this entry in the truth table now i will make both inputs 1 
so you can see here sum is 0 and carry is equal to 1 add in the truth table so if you click on the print you will get the print of the circuit diagram and the truth table you can save it for your further reference so that is the simulation of the half adder so in the simulator too like the gate you can give the inputs and you can predict the outputs and you can check whether they are correct or not so suppose if i enter one if i enter one then my expected output is some zero and carry one so i check it so it is correct so if i changing it to one and if i check it then the result is incorrect so this is the simulation for the half adder so in a quick way i will go to the simulation of the full adder so this is the circuit for the full adder using 7486 7408 7432 so i will make the vcc supply to the ic's on and here in the truth table you can see there are three inputs a b and c in and the outputs are sum and carry so for full adder if any one input is 1 the sum is 1 if two or more inputs are 1 the carry is 1 and if both inputs are 0 if all three inputs are 0 sum 0 and carry 0 so now i verify this truth table of full adder by changing the switch combinations so here we have all the three inputs 0 so sum is 0 carry is 0 i will add in the truth table similarly now i will make 0 0 1 so sum 1 carry 0 so add in the truth table next combination 0 1 0 sum 1 carry 0 add in the truth table then 0 1 1 then you have two inputs one so carry will be equal to one so here you can see the led for carry is glowing so add in the truth table so then the combination is 1 0 0 1 0 0 sum is 1 carry is 0 one zero one for that carry is one sum is zero so you can add that in the truth table so one one zero for one one zero sum is zero carry is one you can add that in the truth table last combination is one 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 which is giving both sum is equal to 1 and carry is equal to 1 you can add that in a truth table so this is how you can demonstrate the truth table a full adder functionality and verify the truth table using simulator 1 and again in a similar way you can go to the simulator 2 where you can give the inputs and write down the expected outputs in a sum and carry dialog box and you can check it so this is the correct one so if i enter here zero and if i check it then it is giving me incorrect so you can uh, check the truth table of the full adder using this simulator 2 as well so this is the demonstration for the full adder using simulator 1 and simulator so now i will go back to the main page of the lab and again go to the list of experiments so i have demonstrated first two experiments so i request you to explore this lab by going through all the 12 experiments that are designed in this lab so if you see the experiment starts with the basic gates and it proceeds further towards the implementation of the basic sequential and the combinational circuits formed using the gates so i hope you have understood the simulation uh, and how to use this lab so I request you to use this lab for your course digital techniques and I am very much thankful for listening me very patiently. Thank you so much.
हेलो एवरीवन आई एम नेहल शर्मा और थोरियर इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट एट पुणे विद्यार्थी गृह कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एंड जे के पी आई एम पुणे आई एम अ मेंबर ऑफ वी लैब्स डिजिटाइजर्स फोरम सिंस ट्वेंटी आई एम करंटली अ प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर एंड अ मेंटर इन वी लैब्स आई हैव डेवलप थ्री एक्सपेरिमेंट्स ऑफ द केमिस्ट्री लैब I have also qualified Bootathon 2.0 and completed VLabs audit course. I have been certified for HTML, C, C++, Arduino by Spoken Tutorial IIT Bombay. So today we have with us Professor Meenal Absangi, ma'am. Ma'am is an assistant professor in the Information Technology Department of PVG COET and JK PIM Pune. She has completed her ME in Information Technology. Ma'am have a total experience of 15 plus years. She is a nodal coordinator at V Labs PVG COET since 2018. Ma'am have developed virtual lab introduction to PHP and digital logic design. She has also organized various V Lab outreach workshops in association with V Lab IIT Bombay. She has also served as a resource person for various outreach training workshops for faculty. in association with vlab iit bombay in engineering colleges in and around pune satara nashik now i would request ma'am to say a few words greetings to one and all in today's outreach workshop i will be explaining the lab from the subject data structures specifically i will be demonstrating the experiment based on sorting techniques this lab is available under vlab.co.in and this lab is developed by iit hyderabad so let me just open the chrome window this is the home page of vlab.co.in Now you can just scroll down here you can see various disciplines you can select from here computer science and engineering under computer science and engineering various labs have been developed now we are going for data structures lab you just scroll down and you can go for data structures one lab which is the newly developed lab by iit hyderabad you can click on this a new tab will open and this tab will contain all the information about this lab which is data structures 1 data structure 1 lab gives you the experiments like sorting graphs trees stacks queues searching link list there is another lab which is data structures 2 which gives you advanced data structures like red black trees etc so over here we are going for the sorting techniques if you click over here that is bubble sort it will open the page for the bubble sort now over here they have given bubble sort as well as optimized bubble sort along with that the detailed analysis for calculation of a time complexity of this bubble sort technique it gives you the overview of that and the most important thing is it gives you all the information in video format also recap just gives you a quick recap about the sorting technique and if you go for the bubble sort again over here you have tabs like aim concept algorithm so you can see it is a complete manual for you available on this virtual labs platform under the concept they have also given a video where a person is explaining how exactly this bubble sort works algorithm section gives you the detailed step by step algorithm along with the demonstration video if you go for the demo it gives you the actual animation of this bubble sort if you click on this 
arrow it gives you the instructions how you are supposed to use this particular demo you can change the speed maximum or minimum and you can say start once you say start it will just highlight in different color specifically yellow color the two elements which are under consideration so i'm just clicking on the start button so you can see that the two elements under consideration whether swap is required which elements are getting compared how many number of comparisons happened how many number of swaps have been ha uh, have been done till the point all this information is given to you under this section which is nothing but observation so just for this demonstration purpose i'm just increasing the speed over here so that it happens fast and once everything is finished what it will do is it will give you how many total number of comparisons and how many total number of swaps happen in the sorting of this array of elements using bubble sort so you can see that every single iteration detailed they have shown with with this animation so you can see here it has given you the sort is complete there were 72 comparisons and there were 20 swaps so this is happening automatically but there is another section which is called as a practice section so you can go to practice section and you can check it out how exactly the things are going to happen so i can just say okay this is a practice so i can say 14 and 46 i don't need any kind of a swapping over here so i can just say next now whether the student has understood the concept correctly or not that we can find out from here because the observations will give you whether the button you clicked is correct or not correct like for example here 46 and 85 as 85 is greater there is no swapping is required so if i say swap it will give me incorrect think again so likewise whether the student has understood the concept properly or not that also i can get it over here with this particular exercise now exactly similar way we can just say next again a swap is required again there is a swap required likewise i can complete this demonstration over here now every iteration the student can perform like this so it here let's see here it is giving me incorrect think again because both the numbers are same i don't need any kind of a swapping because this is a stable sort so we can just go ahead i just need a swap so in the first iteration i got highest number which is 85 got placed at its proper position which is nothing but the last position exactly on the similar basis there are other tabs like a exercise so if you just click on the exercise it will open you a new exercise and it will tell you what you have to do you can just give start again it will give you whether you have to do next or swap accordingly all the observations will be available to you over here now what happens is even if the the elements which are sort or even if i have a sorted data this algorithm will still go on comparing the elements so we can optimize this by using optimized bubble sort and the detailed information about that is given over here again you can see over here the similar tabs like aim what is the optimization technique they have used so all the detailed information is also given over here based on a video you can go for again the similar practice session or you can go for the exercise so you can really come to know whether the student has understood this sorting technique properly or not not only just giving you the information about how this sorting technique works but it also gives you the information about the analysis part of it what is the space complexity what is the time complexity what is the stability of the bubble sort and its comparison over other algorithms 
all the detailed information about just one single technique is available over here which is a bubble sort in this experiment they have just given the bubble sort exactly same way there is a insertion sort there is a merge sort all these experiments are explained almost in the similar fashion so you can see that it's a complete manual where under bubble sort whatever are the features are there like its algorithm like the practice like the exercise then its time complexity space complexity its optimization everything is available at one place so you can just open this and you can use this for your subject now the most important thing is we have the concept of slow learners and weak learners so some part of this is not there in your syllabus like let's say optimization of the bubble sort is not there or the time and the space complexity is not there so you can give these uh, these kinds of readings or these kinds of exercises to those students who are very fast learners so for this purpose also we can use this uh, this virtual lab as a tool even for slow learners or the fast learners now you can see that this subject whatever we are talking about let me just go to ppt again so you can see that the subject is entirely available on our virtual labs so i have just kept over here a mapping of msbte computer engineering group and information technology group the subject is data structures using c and the subject you know that it is in the third semester now this all the experiments which have been mentioned in this lab or in this subject are available under virtual lab so you can check a maximum benefit of it and you can ask the students to use these labs for the practice purpose for additional information so that they can have the concepts very clearly understood so that's it from my side thank you very much thank you once again greetings everyone rajesh nilesh thakre here let me introduce myself first I am a second year IT branch student at Pune Vidyarthi Griha Pune. I recently completed the VLAB audit course and am a mentor and trainee at VLAB PVD COET. I also was a mentor for the national web development event held on 17 July 2021 in coordination with VLAB. Along that, I am also a member of other technical clubs like ITSA, EDC, and Robotics. I have been certified in HTML and CSS course from IIT Bombay. Now, with great pleasure. let me introduce you all to the head of first year engineering department professor mrs anjali suresh wagmare she got her bsc degree in chemistry stream from shivaji university kolhapur in 1994 then msc degree in polymer chemistry stream from shivaji university kolhapur in 1996 she completed her bed in science and math stream from shivaji university kolhapur in 1997 She now has a teaching experience of 22 years and still counting. Her topic of interest in research is polymer nanocomposites. Talking about her remarkable work, she had presented a paper on algae, a superior alternative for production of biodiesel in national conference on chemical engineering and environmental current trends and issues on 3rd and 4th November 2006 at the Institute of Engineering and Science IPS Academy Department of Chemical Engineering in Indore, Madhya Pradesh. She has co-authored the paper on biogas and marine board from waste green leaves in the International Congress of Environmental Research held at Gitanjali Girls PG College Bhopal between 28 to 30 December in 2007. Now over to you Agmare ma'am. Basic Sciences semester 1 and another practical from Chemistry Applied Sciences. <laughs> So if you see the list of the practicals so from first semester we we'll have demonstration of pH meters pH values and second semester determination of hardness by EDTA method now for this 
will see how to go. Now in the search engine, type the vlabsiitb.ac.in vlabsiitb.ac.in Click on this. Yes. Now scroll down. Go for chemical sciences. Yes, chemical sciences. So now to see the exact experiment of chemistry, there are different branches. So physical, organic, inorganic, then click on inorganic chemistry. So now in, in organic, organic chemistry, you will see that, that it has a number, number of different headings. So to have the, the pH metry or pH values of a known solution, we are, we are going, going to go in detail of water analysis, determination of physical parameters. Now if you see the objective on the screen, objective is to determine physical parameters, turbidity, pH conductance. So, so theory is given related, related with this, this procedure, self-evaluation, simulator, assignment, reference, etc. Now, now to perform, perform the experiment, we have to go to the simulator. Yes. yes. And, and then, then log in for this. The registration is the initial part. Okay. So, so I'll log in. Yes. Now, the experiment will be uploaded on the screen. pH value determination of unknown solutions or different solutions. Yes, water analysis, physical content. So, I will make it a full screen. Yes. Now, on the right hand side, you see the different variables. That is, select a test which what we want to test is pH value. So, pH value. Now, on the left hand side or on the screen, you see that pH value determination is done by pH meter which is connected to the electrode, combination glass electrode which has two electrodes that is Glass indicator electrode and reference electrode may be calmer or silver, silver chloride electrode. So they are dipped in water sample. Now, before we note down pH value of a known solution, it is essential to standardize the pH meter. So in this virtual lab also, standardization part is displayed for this. We use different buffer solutions. So buffer solution having 4 pH, I'll select first. Two buffer solutions are given here. So I'll select 4 pH first and then the tab standardization. As soon as I click on standardization, it will show 4 pH. Okay. Then the next buffer solution that is 7 pH, then standardization, it shows 7. So simultaneously you can see that the water is or the sample. Now standardization is done as you all know by dipping these electrodes in distilled water. Now after standardization the sample uh, whose pH is to be determined. So the beaker containing it is replaced assuming that now we are going for sample water sample. So, if you want to find out the uh, pH value of tap water, so I will select the tap water. But still it is not showing any value on the monitor, so for that purpose, I have to click on switch on. So, as soon as I click switch on, the monitor will show pH value as well as here we can see. Yes. So, showing 7. Similarly, here also it is displaying 7. Now go for next water sample, suppose if it is now well water, then again switch on, note down 8.4. So like that the values, you can form a table 
and different water samples. Now distilled water I have selected, switch on, note down the pH in a tabular form also it can be done. Now next is sea water. So you can just compare it. Suppose sea water is there now here. Switch on shows 7. So you can compare the pH values of different water samples. So this is about pH value determination. Similarly, you can have turbidity, electrical conductivity, etc. Now we'll go for the next experiment. For this, I'll just go back in inorganic only. Yes, water analysis, but now I don't want physical parameters. I have to perform the experiment of uh, which one? Estimation of hardness by EDTA method. Okay, so now again coming back to inorganic chemistry virtual lab tab. There, first part we have seen one experiment physical parameters. Now I'll go for chemical parameters. Yes, now the same <coughs> things are displayed here. That is theory related with it, procedure, etc. And if you see the objective to determine the chemical parameters such as hardness, alkalinity, COD, etc. Now from this I am going to demonstrate the hardness part. Even alkalinity is there for MSBT syllabus. So for this demonstration of practical, before simulator you can see the theory part is given. Now here in this experiment we can determine the total hardness by EDTA method. So temporary hardness, permanent hardness ranges are given. Then the part that is calculation part you can see the color change also before end point at end point. So this is the end point uh, reddish pink to blue and this is the formula in which Calculation is to be done by substituting the values that is volume of EDT into molarity of EDT into 100 into 1000 upon volume of water sample. Now I will go for the simulator. I will demonstrate you how to perform this experiment on virtual lab. Determination of hardness of water sample by EDT method. Okay. Now let me make it full screen. Good. You can see even the labels. Okay. So now on, on the right, right hand side, side, there are. So you can see here, select which variable test you want to do that is hardness, alkalinity, or COD. Now I want to perform hardness or demonstrate the hardness part. Now in this, it's a titration, so burette is filled with EDTA solution. That is the volume of, sorry, the titrant EDTA which is filled in the burette. And in conical flask, well water. So that volume of titrate is 10 ml. Now assuming that the beaker, uh, sorry, the conical flask along with the water sample a requirement of buffer solution and then indicator that is ereochrome black tea is added. So the color appears a reddish pink and constant stirring is being conducted. Now to perform this titration, well water is selected. I'll just keep this 10 ml as water sample. Speed I'll just increase. So instead of 0.1, I'll make it 0.5. Yes. And molarity, I'll keep it constant point, not 1. So as soon as I start, the volume from uh, this view rate will be released in this. The drops will be visible. And we have to continue the titration. Now see, I'll start it. Continue the titration till it becomes blue. As soon as it becomes blue, I have stopped the titration. And you can see the reading. Titrate use 1.1, 1.2. So go on adding till it becomes blue. Yes, it is pink still. So all, yes, stop. So now the drops also have stopped. So the reading is 2.5 ml for well water. Note down this. 
is V1 or V. Volume of titrant added from the buret get the end point. Then you can do the calculation in the same formula by substituting. Now, in the same manner, we can uh, find out the ml of titrant. For this, what I have to do? For next water sample. So, I'll reset it. Again, it becomes reddish pink, assuming. Now, instead of well water, I'll select the next, that is tap water. Now, so tap water, volume of titrate, that is in the conical flask, 10 ml. Speed, again, 10.5, molarity 0.01. So, here now it is showing that is titrate used is 0 ml. So, I'll start the titration and stop it as soon as it becomes. Now, it is tap water, so we can check that it may be little bit the hardness less than the well water. Yes, stop. So, it is less than even 2 ml. So, 1.6 ml. So, ereochrome black tea was added. So, it was reddish pink turned to blue. So, the color ereochrome black tea is actually blue which is obtained at the end of the titration. Now, again I'll reset and the third sample given is sea water. So, assuming everything same, I'll just again increase the speed. Water sample was only changed. Now, since it is sea water, maybe the hardness is a little bit more compared to both. So, as soon as you start the volume, it will start dropping from the burette solution. And when it turns blue, we have to stop the titration. Now, EDTA being a strong complexing agent, it complexes with all the calcium and magnesium ions from this flask water sample. And when all calcium it complexes with it, the color appears to be blue. So, the color of the complex is actually colorless and the blue color is of the indicator which has no choice. It has to show its own color at the end point. So, see, it has increased even above 4 ml titrant use. So, sea water we have selected. So, maybe the hardness is more compared to tap water. And well water, how much it is? Yes, top. So, it is 6 ml. So, like that we can substitute the values separately in the formulas and find out the total hardness which will help students to uh, compare the hardness of it. So, like this we can even check for uh, um, alkalinity etc. So, thank you all of you and hope that you have enjoyed the experiments of virtual lab. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Shruti Yadav and I am a mentor at PLAPS Digitizers. A quick introduction about myself. I have been a member of VLABS since 2019. I have served as a mentor in Bhutathon, Knockdown the Lockdown 2, organized by Virtual Labs IIT Bombay. Apart from being a mentor, I am also a student trainer and I've trained numerous students in TypeScript and C++. I have been a developer for Fluid Mechanics Lab and Physics Lab and have developed various experiments associated with it. I have completed my audit course and am certified by IIT Bombay for HTML, Basic and Advanced C++, Python and Arduino. Moving ahead, now I would like to introduce Dr. Shri Devi Kulkarni Ma'am. Dr. Shri Devi Kulkarni Ma'am is working as an assistant professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering at D.Y. Patil, deemed to be University, Navi Mumbai. She has completed her bachelor's in instrumentation engineering, her master's in biomedical instrumentation, and her PhD in electrical and electronics engineering and science. She is the Regional Technical Coordinator for Raigad and Navi Mumbai region of B-Labs at D.Y. Patil, deemed to be University. She has also participated in Bootcamp 
held at Marwadi University, Rajkot. She was a mentor for the Bhutathon held at REC Banda and has been mentoring for the development of virtual labs till date. With this, I would request Dr. Sri Devi Kulkarni ma'am to say a few words. Thank you. Hello everyone. I am Dr. Sri Devi Kulkarni, working as Assistant Professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering, School of Biotechnology and Bioinformatics, D.Y. Patil Deem to be University. Our organization is being recognized as the Nodal Center and Regional Center for Virtual Labs in association with IITB and I am the Regional Technical Coordinator. I welcome you all for the outreach workshop of Virtual Labs. Today I am going to discuss the usage of an experiment related to electrical engineering. The lab corresponding is sensors modeling and simulation lab. The experiment which has been chosen is characterize the temperature sensor RTD. The link of the experiment that is going to be explained is as given in this slide. This is the link of the experiment in virtual labs and it is developed by COEP Pune. The subject mapping in MSBTE is as follows. It bears the course code 22348 and 22335 with a program named Diploma in Medical Electronics and Diploma in Instrumentation slash Instrumentation and Control. It belongs to the third semester and the course title is Biosensor and Instru Industrial Measurement respectively. Now to begin with, let's navigate through www.vlab.co.in. So as we are going to click this, then we land up to a page. So this is the page of Virtual Labs, an initiative of Ministry of Education under the National Mission on Education through ICT. As we are going to scroll down, then we are going to get the objectives and broad areas of Virtual Labs. So we are going to select Electrical Engineering, the domain of our choice where the experiment is present. So I click on electrical engineering. Then we have ready to use labs in this list. Now out of this, we are going to choose sensor modeling and simulation lab where the experiment falls. Now this gives us the introduction and list of experiments regarding the sensors lab. So as I click on the list of experiments, then we are going to get a list of experiments corresponding to the sensors lab like characterize the temperature sensor R RTD, simulate the performance of biosensor, measurement of level in tank using capacitive type level probe, characterize the LBDT, design an orifice plate for typical application, simulate the performance of chemical sensor, characterize the strain gauge sensor, characterize the temperature sensor thermocouple. Now out of this, I have chosen characterize the temperature sensor RTD for the demonstration so when i click on this then we get into the experiment characterize the temperature sensor rtd now on to the left hand side we can see that we have a number of options like aim pretest, theory simulator procedure audio video post test review question references photo gallery and feedback now when i click on aim then we are going to understand the aim of the experiment that is to understand the working principle of RTD and then we have the objectives of this experiment which is nothing but study of static and dynamic characteristics of RTD and study effects of various parameters on RTD performance. So there are there is something called as pretest which is generally taken by the student in order to understand the amount of uh, content which the student has understood regarding a particular topic. So this is the pre-test which is generally taken before the experimentation using the simulator. So when I am just randomly clicking on the answers here, a random click on the answers and then we have a submit button which, get, which has to be given. So once we do this then I get the number of questions which I have answered right and the number of questions which I have not answered right. So I can either take the quiz again or I can read the solutions. So the student can do the same in order to find out whether he or she is able to answer these pretest questions. 
once the pretest questions are done then the student can get into the theory theoretical part so the theory is going to deal with all the content that is required by the student to start with the simulator now this is about characterize the temperature sensor rtd so the prerequisites of whatever theoretical content the student has to understand is given here like it can be the meaning of the temperature the electrical resistance and the formula related to it temperature measurement using rtd the formulas which are rele relevant for this particular thing and the materials which are going to be used for the construction of rtd then the temperature calculations using a very well known formula that is rt is equal to r0 into 1 plus alpha t where rt is the resistance at temperature t and r0 is the resistance at reference temperature and alpha is temperature coefficient of resistance which we are going to use even in the experiment they have also showcased the graph of the rtd that is uh, temperature versus resistance and then we have all these equations and calculations apart from this we are also having the list of materials which are going to be used and then we have these equations or understanding about the static characteristics like accuracy stability interchangeability then the dynamic characteristics which are response time so all these content are given in theory so these are the prerequisites which a student has to understand before starting with a simulator apart from this there's a procedure which is given so this procedure is nothing but a step by step guide in order to use the simulator the simulator experiment is divided into two levels level 1 and level 2 corresponding to static characteristics of rtd and dynamic characteristics of rtd so the procedure gives us a step by step understanding of the usage of the simulator now let's get to the simulator now as i click on the simulator then here it shows click here for simulator so when i click this then i get a page of resistance temperature detector this is the lab which we are going to work with now this is level 1 which is corresponding to the static characteristics of rtd now there is a figure which is showing us the rtd with its head and the rtd is dipped into a solution where the temperature is going to change now on to the right hand side is the control panel where we can select the material the r not value and then we can get the temperatures and calculate the values of rt and enter these values and look about a look to the plot of this particular static characteristics so here in the scroll we are going to have different materials that can be used for the construction of rtd now i am going to choose platinum as the material once i choose platinum as the material then i am going to get the values corresponding to this particular material the alpha value and the temperature range so the alpha value is 0.00385 and temperature range is about minus 200 to 850 degrees now apart from this i can also choose the r not value that is the resistance at reference temperature so here i am going to choose 100 as the reference temp uh, resistance of the reference temperature now once i have chosen all the prerequisites then i say get temperature the simulator provides us with the temperature now we are going to use the formula and calculate rt value and then enter it here in the output so the formula is rt is equal to r0 into 1 plus alpha t otherwise we can click on this formula which gives us the information regarding the formula so this is also provided in theory and for reference it is provided here also now the temperature which we have obtained is 638 so i am going to calculate rt value 638 into 0.00385 plus 1 into 100 so i am making use of the formula which is given substituting the values and then i am going to input the value which i have calculated so the student has to input the value which they calculate and then press the submit button
so if the answer is correct then only we get this highlighted correct button otherwise it asks us to recalculate now we get another value of get through the get temperature so now we are going to calculate one more value 135 into 0.00385 plus 1 into 100 so i get the value as 151.9 seven five and i input this value and press the submit button since it is correct it gives me it accepts this particular value then i get one more temperature value so it is 742 742 into 0 0.0385 plus 1 into 100 so I am going to input the value of 385.67 and then submit. We need at least minimum of three values for the plot button to highlight. That is we are going to get the static characteristics or we can get the plot of temperature versus resistance which we have just now calculated. We can have many more values for the plot. A number of uh, samples can be increased in order to get this plot when i click on this plot button then it gives me a graph which is going to be a, a plot of temperature versus resistance so as i'm going to scroll on this plot then i can see these values which i have uh, calculated for various temperatures which was provided by the simulator so this completes the level one so making use of this particular graph we can calculate the static characteristics or understand the static characteristics of this particular sensor. Now we go to level 2. Now level 2 relates to the dynamic characteristics of the experiment. Now here we have different options available. That is the first one is bare material. The second one is with sheath. The third one is with the thermo well. Now when I am going to click bare material, then I have already chosen platinum to be the material. Now the time constant corresponding only to the material gets displayed that is 1.17 seconds. This is the time constant. Now once we have clicked this we are going to get the RTD which is being constructed using only a material that is platinum. Now when we are going to select this with sheet a sheet is going to get constructed along with a bare material so this is shown in the figure besides now here we can select the type of the material for the sheet and also the thickness of the sheet can be chosen and we are going to get the corresponding time constant for this particular option we can have different combinations provided so that we can understand the change in the time constant for this these combinations now we have the next one that is the thermo well when we click on this then a thermo well gets generated from along with the sheet and now we can choose the type of the material which we are going to choose for the thermo well and the thickness of this also can be chosen along with this we have something called as the filling material so we can choose the filling materials also and we are going to get the time constant corresponding to this particular combination so we can again change the combinations and then find out what are the changes in the time constant so once we are done with uh, the choice of all these then we get a plot this is the plot of the dynamic characteristics that is the time versus the temperature now the blue line gives us the temp uh, dynamic characteristic for the bare material the green gives us with the sheet and the orange gives us with the thermo well and the yellow indicates the step input so this is the way in which the response dynamic response is obtained for the level, uh, dynamic response is obtained for the rtd so by understanding by varying these combinations we can find out different time constants which are available for rtd 
Now, the flexibility of the choice of the material, choice of the sheath, choice of the thermo well, then the thicknesses and other relevant data is possible using virtual labs, which would otherwise not be possible in the regular labs. So, this is an advantage offered by the simulator. And uh, so, we complete level 1 and level 2, that is static and dynamic characteristics of RTD. I hope I was able to... Um, help you understand the working of the simulator and uh, rest of the parts. Now, once the simulator is done, we can have the post test. So, this is the post test. Then the references, which are uh, nothing but the uh, topics or the books, useful links from which the material has been used for the partic this particular experiment. So, uh, I wish I was able to help you guide as to how to use the simulator for this particular experiment and the same thing holds good for the other experiments also. So, thank you for watching this video. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Dhruv Bogaukar. Let me start with my introduction. I am a second year engineering student at PVG COET and GKPIM. I am a mentor at VLabs Digitizers. I have been certified by IIT Bombay for the completion of HTML training. I have worked as a resource person for the national event on web development held at PVG COET and GKPIM. Now, I would like to introduce Honorable Professor Sheetal Chinkhede. Sheetal Ma'am has completed her BE in Electronics and Power Engineering from VNIT Nagpur. She completed her ME in Electrical Engineering from Faculty of Technology and Engineering, the Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Baroda. She specialized in Industrial Electronics. Talking about Ma'am's professional experience, Ma'am has over 23 years of teaching experience. She has been the lecturer for Department of Electrical Engineering at Polytechnic, MS University of Baroda. She has also been an assistant director for the Department of Computer Engineering at the Polytechnic, MS University, Baroda. She has also worked as a deputy director for the Office of Career Advancement for Student at MS University of Baroda. Ma'am is also the nodal coordinator for VLabs MS University, Baroda. Ma'am was also the mentor of change for Atal Tinkering Lab nominated by Niti Aayog, Government of India. Talking about Ma'am's research and publications, Ma'am has over 6 international publications and 10 national publications. Ma'am has worked on research project Distributed Energy Sources and Switching Techniques funded by Research and Consultancy Cell, the Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Baroda in 2013 and 2014. Ma'am is currently working on the project Impact of Climate Change on Energy Consumption Pattern Case Study of Vadodara City funded by Climate Change Department, Government of Gujarat. Now, I would like to request Sheetal Ma'am to say a few words. Namaskar, myself Sheetal Shimkhede. I am Nodal Coordinator of Virtual Lab at the Maharaja Sayajira University of Baroda, Vadodara. Today I will show you one experiment that is verification of theory, Thevenin theorems and how this can be uh, performed uh, using this virtual lab. During the period of pandemic actually the virtual, lab, virtual labs are blessings to academicians uh, as well as students. So, let us have a short tour of this virtual lab. <coughs> Whenever you want to start virtual lab, type vlabs.iitb.ac.in, you will find this page. Then go to labs. There are various disciplines over here. I am going to select electronics and communication. In that, I will select uh, analog signals networks and measurement here there are there is a tab that is list of experiments go to this tab open this tab then and then there are number of experiments over here out of this i am selecting verification of thevenin theorem there are again various tabs here theory pre procedure operating environment, simulator, quiz, references. This theory, it gives you at a glance what is 
Thevenin theorem is uh, this I am not going to uh, explain this procedure this is a circuit for which we are going to uh, solve this circuit uh, with the help of Thevenin theorem this is RL and we will find out current flowing through this RL with the help of Thevenin theorem uh, this this procedure actually tells you how to uh, operate this simulator then operating environment means what you need for this what are the minimum prerequisites to open this simulator when you click on the simulator here you will get a link to the simulator click here to perform the experiment say so this is the experiment uh, this is the circuit uh, actually and here this is value of uh, this is RL and we want to find out current flowing through this RL. Here there are various resistors you can solve this first of all and find out uh, theoretically current flowing through this RL. Now how to solve this with the help of simulator. So there are steps given in this case this r we can vary this r okay this r r3 we can vary r1 we can vary r2 we can vary we can vary even this v2 okay we can vary rl okay so all this uh, we can change even supply voltage we can change so there are um, uh, number of uh, probabilities number of uh, observations for the uh, number of observations you can take you can solve number of examples with this one circuit and you can verify also so what is given here is case one in the case one it is mentioned to get the load current select switches s1 to power see here there is an option power short and intermediate so select this power mode and s2 this is s2 and here we will select this in load mode okay and then simulate this so you will get the value of current okay now we will verify this with the help of Thevenin theorem so case 2 when we want to find out current through uh, any resistance with the help of Thevenin theorem we will uh, the general generally what we do is we open it or remove this okay and we find out vth that is thevenin voltage and rth so the, here are the steps given okay so to find out vth s1 is connected to power mode and s2 that is in the intermediate mode okay and then find out simulate this you will get vth then another is case 2 that is to find out rth so for this rth what we say is if there is a voltage source short it if there is a current source open it so since this is a there is a voltage source i keep this s1 to short mode and s2 to power mode okay and then we'll find out rph third case here is the circuit this is called as thevenin circuit okay where rth voltage source and rl is there okay you simulate this so whatever the current you can fill this in the table here is the table given okay load current from case 1 and load current with the help of Thienin theorem you can verify this so you can take number of readings you can solve this and you can verify the result so this is the way uh, you can perform this experiment where that is verification of Thevenin theorem there is a quiz here you can solve this quiz number of examples are given over, given over here okay these are the options given okay and you can submit this you will get the result okay here there are references given which book you can refer for this okay so uh, and some NPTEL videos are video lectures are also available there are all labs available another labs also available like verification of Norton theorem superposition three phase power uh, measurement and so on so you can go through this one by one 
and this is, I, and I'm sure this will be very much useful uh, to the students. Thank you. Hello everybody. This is Pratna Gaikwad from Pune Vidyarthi Guru's COIT and GKPIM Pune. A quick introduction about myself. I have successfully completed audit course of Virtual Labs. I am a member of Virtual Labs Digitizers Forum since 2020. Apart from being a member, I am also a mentor at VLabs Digitizers. I have been certified for HTML, Basic and Advanced CPP, Python 3.4.3 by IIT Bombay. Moving ahead, I would like to introduce Dr. Manoj Taramle sir. Dr. Manoj Taramle sir is in charge principal of our college, Pune Vidyati Grihas College of Engineering and Technology and G.K. Pate Vani Institute of Management, Pune. He has completed his bachelor's from electrical department as well as his master's from electrical control system. He has completed his PhD from electrical biomedical image processing. He has more than 27 years of academic experience and one year of industrial experience. He started his work experience from MS Suha's engineering work Pirangut Puni as an engineer from 1992 to 1993. Later, he joined PVG COIT Pune in electrical department from 1993 to 2008. And then he joined MMCOE Pune in electrical department from 2008 till current date. He worked as assistant professor and at present he is working as associate professor. His research topic is in the field of biomedical image processing applied for detection of lung cancer in its early stage from chest x-ray image. His areas of interest are control system, analog and digital electronics, instrumentation, biomedical image processing, robotics, electric and hybrid vehicles, illumination engineering, etc. Till today, he has published one paper in national conference, seven papers in international conferences and nine papers in international journals. His profession affiliations are, he is currently a member at Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, IEEE. Also, he is a member of Control System Society. He is a life member at Indian Society for Technical Education, ISTE and International Society for Research and Development, ISRD. He is a member of Quality Circle Forum of India, QCFI and also International Association of Engineers, IAENG. Till now, he has visited Malaysia, Bangkok, Hong Kong, Macau, China, Japan, Singapore for technical paper presentations, program chair, conference chair, conference journal chair to deliver keynote address and for academic purposes. He has been awarded with InterSciences Young Investigator Award of Information Technology and Computer Society. Bhubaneswar, India for the paper published in 2015. He has also been awarded with Most Excellent Paper Award for paper presented in Malaysia 2013 and Best Paper Award for the paper presented in conference held at MGI COIT Shegao in 2018. His special achievement is he has delivered a speech in BIT's 8th World Congress on Industrial Biotechnology held at Nanjing, China in April 2015. His honors are, he has delivered a keynote address on the topic of job opportunities and skill set required for entrepreneurships during COVID-19 pandemic situation in 8th international conference organized by Universitas Negeri Gorontalo, Indonesia on the topic creative entrepreneurship and innovation management in response to COVID-19 pandemic. He has also delivered a keynote address on the topic detection of medical disease, lung cancer using image processing tool on 18 June 2020 in international conference organized by the Ministry of Public Education, Uzbekistan. He has been appointed as a mentor for change by NITYIO, Government of India for development of skill set lab at New English School, Landewadi. He is acting as a president of Indian region for the chapter of CBEES, Hong Kong, China for their technical and scientific international activities. He is also acting as an editor in charge for the international journal IJRPT. Now, I would request Dr. Manoj Tarambli sir 
to say a few words. Hello, I, Dr. Manoj Tarambale, in charge principal, Pune Vidyarthi Gruhas College of Engineering and Technology and GK Pate Institute of Management, welcome you for this one-day national event, Virtual Labs Outreach Workshop, which we are organizing for the faculty of Polytechnic and the students of Polytechnic. This workshop we are organizing in association with IIT Bombay. I sincerely thank Dr. Pushpadeep, Project Manager and Dr. Santosh, Principal Investigator, Virtual Lab IIT Bombay for their kind support and keeping faith on us and allotting this workshop to conduct. For their wholehearted support, I am thankful to them. I also thank my management, Pune Vidyarthi Gruha, for allowing for such type of program which are completely academic based for the benefit of the society at large. This organization is possible with various regional centers and nodal centers of virtual lab from Badoda, Mumbai, Pune, Navi Mumbai and Aurangabad. So I am thankful to them also for making this event grand success. Thank you. Virtual Lab is an initiative of the Ministry of Education. Virtual Lab includes web resources, video lectures, animated demonstrations and so on. And hence, one can say that it is a complete learning management system. Virtual labs for various disciplines of engineering and technology are available, such as electrical, electronics, communication, computer, mechanical, biotechnology, chemistry, physics. Now, these labs in virtual environment will give student to feel as if they are doing a real time experimentation and hence it will carry an importance. Virtual lab is one of the excellent ICT tool student and faculty can use as these labs are available 24 by 7, anyone can access from any place and these are available absolutely at free of charge. Faculty can use these labs for giving live demonstration of the virtual experimentation so that they can bridge the gap between their classroom teaching and the physical lab conduction. Virtual labs is one of the best practices followed by Pune Vidyarthi Gruhas College of Engineering since 2015. Under the guidance of IIT Bombay and faculties and students of engineering college successfully developed more than 100 experiments to cater the need of university syllabus. After rigorous review, these experiments are available and published on the virtual lab portal of IIT Bombay. During this COVID-19 pandemic situation, virtual lab experiments developed proved to be the best for conduction of experiment in online mode. This advantages to the students and faculty to demonstrate the actual working of the experiment but in virtual mode. Pune Vidyarthi Gruhas College of Engineering 
is a major regional center and is instrumental in introducing virtual labs experiment in engineering syllabus at present under the umbrella of this regional center 57 plus nodal centers are working effectively virtual lab is a recently developed distance learning tool that is giving solution to boost the quality of engineering education strengthening the understanding and providing the necessary practical skills to the student and faculty i hope faculties of polytechnic colleges will use this tool for effective implementation of teaching learning process for the benefit of the student to demonstrate the experiment in virtual mode for a better understanding at the last i hope this one day workshop at the end will help will be helpful to the faculties of the polytechnic to take this experimentation new mode ahead and use it in the teaching learning process effectively thank you
Hello guys and welcome. My name is Ishan Nirkar. I am a student of SC Computer at PEG's College of Engineering and Technology. I have also been a member of the VLabs community for approximately the past 7 months and have successfully completed the audit course. I am a certified HTML developer from IIT Mumbai. I have also participated in two hackathons in my first year. And I was also one of the resource persons for a web development workshop held by PVG's College of Engineering and Technology. Now, I would like to introduce Professor Surendra Krishnath Giram, who is the principal of AISSMS Polytechnic Pune. He completed ME MEC, ME Prod, and is currently pursuing a PhD MEC. He has an experience of 29 years in teaching and one year in industry. He has also published books and papers, like the first one here being published with ISBN 9783320066, and the year of publication was 2019. And the second one being Energy Conservation and Audit National Conference, Elecom 98, Pune. He also has two professional memberships. First one being Life Membership of ISTE LM 16314. And the second one being Chairman ISTE Faculty Chapter. Now having said that, I would like Surendra Krishnath sir to say a few words. First of all, I take the opportunity to thank IIT Mumbai and Ministry of HRD Central Government of India for identifying our polytechnic as a nodal center for virtual labs. As all of we know, the key advantages of virtual laboratories are access anytime and anywhere and one can repeat experiments as many times as needed to fully understand the material. Virtual labs allow students to participate in lab-based learning exercises without the costs and limitations of a physical lab. With the help of virtual labs, teachers and students can use advanced technology that yield authentic results. I appeal all the teachers and students of polytechnics to access the virtual labs as far as possible. As we are aware, in the pandemic situation of COVID-19, most of the engineering colleges, teachers and students have taken the benefit of VLabs to develop their motor skills. As a nodal center of VLab for polytechnics, we have tried to map the present experience of various disciplines with respect to polytechnic curriculum. But it has been observed that most of the contents are applicable to engineering college students. So I request the concerned IIT people to develop separate virtual labs for the Polytechnics. In this context, we are, as a nodal center and accredited polytechnic are ready to fulfill all the requirements to develop VLabs for polytechnics. Also, I would like to appeal to all polytechnic faculties to use VLabs as far as possible and one can use the same in following way. As a visual aid to teach complex concepts, to refresh students' knowledge before teaching new material as a pre-lab exercise to provide lab work to courses with no existing lab component to facilitate online learning as a post-lab exercise as a content beyond syllabus. It's my humble request for all polytechnic teachers and students to please support the efforts of IIT Hawaii and Minister of HRD, Central Government of India by utilizing the virtual laboratories as far as possible. Also, as a nodal center of VLabs for polytechnics, we are ready to conduct outreach workshops for polytechnic teachers and students. And we feel such kind of workshops are most significant to increase awareness among all concerned end users. Lastly, but not the least, on behalf of AI SSMS Polytechnic Pune, 
I'm thankful to all of you for patient listening and I take the opportunity to thank IIT Pauai and Minister of HRD Government of India for identifying us as an order center for of me labs for politics. Thank you one and all. Greetings everyone, Rajesh Nilesh Thakri here. Let me introduce myself first. I am a second year IT branch student at Pune Vidyarthi Griha, Pune. I recently completed the VLAB audit course and I am a mentor and trainee at VLAB PVDCOET. I also was a mentor for the national web development event held on 17 July 2021 in coordination with VLAB. Along that, I am also a member of other technical clubs like ITSA, EDC and Robotics. I have been certified in HTML and CSS course from IIT Bombay. Allow me to introduce you all to an extraordinary person, Honorable Nitin Bhatte sir. He has always been inquisitive to acquire knowledge and develop new skills and has reached new heights with his inspiring leadership qualities and communication skills. He completed his BE in Chemical Engineering in July 1994 from PVPIT Budgaon. Then he got his master's degree in polymer technology stream in July 1998. Then he acquired his PhD from IIT Bombay in 2008. He started his rousing professional venture as a lecturer in Department of Chemical Engineering in MSU Baroda in 1998. He is currently doing a wonderful job as head of the Technology and Engineering Department at MSU Baroda. He has co-authored two books. relevant to chemical engineering laboratory and several publications in the journal of national and international repute along with many other representation in renowned conferences he has coordinated and conducted various workshops for curriculum development up to this state with vlabs and msu baroda he is academic committee member of national children science congress varudra district he also is nodal coordinator for virtual labs at ms university of barodara and regional coordinator of virtual labs for gujarat region due to his hard work he has received many honors he won the best presentation award in joint indo us chemcon 2005 conference in december 2004 he was awarded with dr r p parnikar purnavat award for excellence in engineering and technology in 2017 he was felicitated by Rajmata Shrimati Shubhangi Gaikwad for successful execution of social science project competition and contribution. He has also received letter of recognition from Tata Center for Technology and Design, IIT Bombay, to name a few. He hasn't stopped there. He introduced the concept of classroom library and donated about 16 such libraries in municipal schools in year 2014-15. He amazed us with gameplay, which. demystifies chemistry and makes it interesting for school children in association with tata center for technology and designed at iit bombay i now appeal bhate sir to take over well uh, uh, various faculty members would have uh, uh, you know talked about uh, or introduced the concept of virtual labs and even showcased several uh, you know labs associated with different domains what i'm going to do today is uh, uh, a little different from what they have done uh, well uh, uh, you will agree that uh, whichever experiments were showcased right somebody has to develop these experiments isn't it so now there is a certain way or there is a certain protocol which has to be followed uh, to develop a virtual lab and this is precisely what i'm going to emphasize on uh, in my today's talk uh now we are, uh, like you have been introduced to the existing virtual labs now uh, uh, just to give you a brief history about uh, uh, you know virtual labs this exercise started uh, uh, almost uh, uh, a couple of years back with uh, several institutes uh, you know contributing towards the uh, development unfortunately there was no unified procedure uh, which was uh, uh, you know suggested or stipulated and hence uh, different institutes and different uh, 
uh, you know, individuals use different platforms uh, to create uh, virtual labs. And this resulted into, uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, non-uniformity as far as the, uh, uh, you know, development procedure is concerned and the methodology is concerned. Uh, majority of these labs are based on, uh, you know, licensed or proprietary softwares. And hence, it becomes very difficult to bring about any uh, a change in the given experiment. So when I say uh, change, it essentially means that suppose if I feel that uh, a given experiment needs to be modified or uh, it could be, you know, updated, uh, there are certain things which can be incorporated. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, by making help of uh, a person who is good at coding and who can, uh, uh, you know, comprehend I know the code, but unfortunately in uh, the present class of uh, uh, virtual labs, uh, the existing virtual labs, this is extremely difficult because these codes are not available uh, because in order uh, for these codes to be available, there are uh, uh, copyright uh, uh, issues associated with them, right? Uh, the fact that it was, uh, as I mentioned, uh, that uh, there was absolutely uh, no proper protocol uh, which was uh, proposed, uh, and hence the learning objectives have not been clearly defined, right? And uh, even uh, the cognitive levels, which we talk about in various uh, you know programs, including NEP, uh, uh, do not become a part of these uh, you know virtual labs. Uh, well, by saying this, I don't intend to criticize uh, the existing virtual lab. See, uh, uh, like uh, it was absolutely essential for somebody to uh, uh, get started and initiate this exercise, and that is what people did. So that's fine. Uh, the other uh, uh, aspect is that all the domains uh, uh, have not been, uh, you know, addressed. Uh, by domains, I mean uh, that uh, there are very few, uh, uh, you know, experiments uh, or virtual labs which have been developed for certain disciplines. Uh, in fact, in uh, uh, some disciplines, uh, 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 there is you won't find a virtual lab at all, right? So there is enough scope for. Uh, uh, you know, virtual lab development. This is what this is what I was uh, I was coming to, and this is what I wanted to emphasize on. And hence the uh, you know uh, idea of uh, uh, defining uh, a proper pedagogy, right? Now, what is the necessity of pedagogy? Well, uh, the present uh, labs, that is the ones which uh, uh, are now going to be proposed or uh, which have been proposed in, in the last one or two years are all based on the FOSS based platform. What is a FOSS based platform? This is free and based on free and open source software, right? And the whole idea of, uh, uh, you know, implementing this or suggesting this platform is that uh, at any point of time, even if you want to uh, make, uh, uh, you know, any kind of changes, right? This code is available because there is no copyright uh, uh, issue associated with sharing, uh, you know, these codes. So with with this, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, so-called a uh, new suggestion and uh, 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 the protocol associated with the development, it becomes much easier and uh, uh, flexible to modify a given lab or even bring about changes in uh, the existing lab, right? Or if you are proposing a new lab, uh, in the future, if somebody wants to bring about any changes, it is it is possible uh, and it is much easy to do this exercise. Well, this also sets uh, a path for uh, a standard protocol for uh, uh, the new virtual labs, irrespective of the discipline. I'm not talking about the content, but I'm talking about the procedure uh, which is followed for uh, developing a new virtual lab, right? Uh, in any uh, development of any virtual lab, what is uh, uh, important is the uh, clarity of thoughts because until unless uh, uh, the person himself or herself is clear, okay, you really cannot uh, convert it into a virtual platform, right? So uh, there are there are transitions which actually happen. So the thoughts are translated into actions, and these actions are uh, ultimately appear on uh, a virtual platform. Uh, I already talked about uh, the ease in the uh, upgrading and the revamping of an existing virtual lab. Uh, the added advantage of uh, having a pedagogy in place is uh, that the learning objectives uh, and the cognitive levels can be well defined for a given lab, and you can actually integrate 
uh, integrate these two so that it becomes more meaningful. Right? I'll explain this with an example uh, as we go ahead. When I talk about pedagogy, what is important is uh, uh, the components associated with the pedagogy. In fact, there are four components, uh, I would say key components associated with the pedagogy. The learning objectives, the purpose, cognitive level and the learning outcomes. However, any pedagogy okay, uh, will be incomplete without three secondary or I would put it as primary uh, uh, you know, components. That is the information, information pertaining to uh, uh, the given uh, lab, the focus area and the instructional strategy. Right. Now, rather than just putting it uh, uh, as a uh, as a sketch and uh, just trying to explain about each of each one of this means, uh, I, I believe that it would be much uh, simpler uh, 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 for for you to uh, uh, you know uh, digest if I uh, put it in the form of an example, right? So let me take an uh, take a very simple example of a, uh, a laboratory microscope. Let's say that. Uh, we want to develop uh, a virtual uh, lab experiment for a microscope. So what do you need in case of information? The general information about microscope, why it is used, where it is used, uh, what are its applications, uh, 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 what are the pros and cons, etc. Okay, general information which a layman needs to know. Uh, then comes the focus area. So focus area would be in fact, there are certain uh, uh, stipulated focus areas which uh, uh, one has to know. OK, so this is uh, so there are six focus areas. So reinforce theoretical concepts. OK, and uh, 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 which essentially means that uh, you need to understand the topics after seeing it visually, which is possible in virtual labs. Instrumentation and practical skills, so instrument specific skills. So uh, uh, meaning this focus area uh, uh, meaning uh, uh, sort of uh, works best for uh, the lab uh, uh, under discussion of the microscope. Then you have experimentation, which talks about the uh, trial and error methods and the traditional experiments uh, uh, which are conducted in the lab. Then we have the data analysis uh, where uh, you have to analyze graphs, results. OK, there is data error analysis. Then we have modeling where different models and theories are tested and the lab is oriented in that fashion. Learn from failure is essentially an instrument failure hazardous working environment. Uh, so uh, see there are certain experiments which uh, uh, we know that they are very important, but they cannot be conducted in the lab from the safety aspects. However, in case of virtual lab, all these things really don't matter because you're doing it on a virtual platform. Even if, it, if something explodes, OK, it is, it is going to explode on a virtual platform, so uh, uh, there won't be any problem, right? So we are talking about these. Uh, let me now talk about the, uh, uh, learning, the learning objectives. What will be the learning objectives of, uh, uh, you know, for a microscope? The objective would be to understand the principle and the working of uh, the microscope, right? What would be the purpose? The purpose is that uh, a user, it could be a student or whomsoever, should be able to make use of the microscope for a given uh, 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 for for a given application, right? There are certain cognitive levels which are required in the formation of uh, uh, the uh, uh, virtual lab, uh, uh, which which I'll talk about a little later. Coming to the learning outcomes, what would be the learning outcomes? The learning outcomes would be the uh, user uh, is able to use the microscope. He or she has understood the principle and the working, right? And any kind of samples uh, 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 which are there uh, can actually be uh, 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 tested using the microscope. So, so these are going to be the learning outcomes, right? So now uh, let me first uh, uh, talk about the instructional strategy because in building of a virtual lab, this is this is something which is equally important. Uh, so there are uh, four types of uh, uh, instructional strategies, expository, guided inquiry, problem based and project based. OK, uh, uh, expository is the with the traditional uh, physical lab and the present experiment uh, under discussion also falls in this category. 
guided inquiry is inquiry based learning a primary level of open endedness problem based is uh, experiment can be posed as a problem statement and uh, uh, learning objectives are usually defined and project based is uh, a real world problem uh, it is in uh, in true sense a uh, open ended problem right so these are the various ways in which you can uh, develop labs right uh, coming to the uh, cognitive levels there are in fact six cognitive levels starting from uh, the most uh, preliminary one which is the remember and going uh, up to create now it is not mandatory to always go to the create level right it all depends and varies from experiment to experiment it is also desired to go to this level but believe me that all experiments cannot uh, be taken to this level okay so there are certain limitations and 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 be it because if it is a simple demo experiment okay uh, we need to restrict it only to remember and understand because that is what is the requirement right uh what is uh, closely associated with uh, cognitive levels uh, you know are the learning objectives and learning objectives need to be defined or need to be mapped based on the uh, cognitive levels right so you will see that uh, you know there are uh, uh, several uh, uh, keywords which we call action verbs which are associated with uh, you know the learning objectives so what it means is that once you fix the cognitive level right you need to use these action words pertaining to uh, the given cognitive level in your learning objectives so it could be uh, in case of microscope just to give you an example uh, one of the exercise or the activity could be you know label uh, the uh, parts of the microscope because unless a user knows uh, what are the various parts of uh, the microscope it would be difficult uh, for uh, you know person to Uh, actually uh, go ahead and experiment with it right uh pedagogy becomes in fact uh, uh, one of the inputs okay to the simulator directly or indirectly so what happens is that pedagogy puts forth a path okay which needs to be followed this gets translated into tasks and flow okay for i am talking the simulator language that is Uh, any kind of uh, uh, you know uh, changes or uh, uh, the patterns which prevail in the simulator are ultimately associated with the task and flow let me give a, again another example about uh, 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 tom and jerry okay so there is a certain pedagogy which has been uh, you know maintained that uh, what is the path which uh, tom and jerry are going to traverse now for uh, a, a person who is into coding to uh, to do this exercise and build a simulator what is required is he or she needs to understand what are going to to be the tasks and what is going to be the flow uh, uh, in which this uh, th these series of events are going to take place and now uh, uh, this becomes sort of a theoretical information it needs to be translated in uh, a pictorial you know format which is done using a, a storyboard and uh, uh, this put together uh, uh, forms a simulator now apart from uh, you know tom and jerry where there is no assessment as such but in virtual labs you also need to have an assessment uh, 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 you know segment and this is very much possible uh, uh, you know in virtual labs and uh, this also has to be aligned uh, you know with the task and flow so all of these put together uh, build a simulator environment which ultimately takes shape of a virtual experiment right so this is in nutshell uh, uh, what i wanted to discuss about uh, uh, the uh, pedagogy associated with uh, uh, you know the development of uh, virtual labs right so i would like to end uh, by saying that uh, a good pedagogy certainly simplifies uh, 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 the virtual labs development to a much much greater extent there is a lot of clarity uh, involved and uh, 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 you land up getting a quality virtual lab what you need to invest in virtual labs development is knowledge creativity you need to put in effort synergy is required because you also need to align with other uh, uh, domain experts and you need, need a lot of patience right which is uh, one of the inherent aspect involved even in research and our teaching learning process right so uh, uh, i would end my uh, session by saying that let us all contribute towards uh, the virtual labs development and its outreach Thank you very much. 
greetings to all i am mrs kshama bhagde working as an assistant professor in pvg coet and jtpim pune i am a virtual lab coordinator for information technology department i am going to demonstrate virtual lab for computer network this is a name of the virtual lab fundamental of computer network and from this network i am going to demonstrate to experiment ipv4 addressing and configuration of cables the links for both the experiments are given here and this lab is developed by maharashtra institute of technology aurangabad the this lab is mapped with msbt e syllabus for the subject data communication and computer network for computer engineering in uh, computer network for information technology and advanced computer network for both the discipline computer engineering and uh, information technology so now i am going to demonstrate the experiments so using this uh, link vlabs.iitb.ac.in uh, you can open this portal where all the labs are available just click on the explore lab and from this select uh, the option approved lab so under this tab many virtual labs is present from here you have to be click on a computer network then this page will be open so this is actual virtual lab fundamental of computer network here you have to be click on the explore and here the experiment is present ip before addressing so click on this you can see there are many tabs are available at uh, left side corner of this page the aim means the aim of the experiment theory related to this experiment as well as related to this particular topic is present here please ask the student go through about the, this particular topic and experiment the pre test is also there student can give the pre test procedure of experiment is also given here the simulation of experiment is given here and post test is also given here so please ask the student go through all the tab given here to get the more knowledge about this particular topic so now i am going to start simulation for simulation you have to be click on this link click here for simulation then the simulation will be open so this is actual simulation for this experiment uh, in this experiment you have to check uh, all the machines are in a network or not uh, here three classes of ip address are given class c b a you have to be select any one suppose i am going to select c then submit it so one network id is generated you have to use this network id to give the ip addresses to the machines so every time there will be new uh, network id also you have to give the subnet mask here also and here also now you have to check all these machines are in network or not so all these machines are in network uh, you can change the value of any one suppose i am going to ch change the ipv4 address of pc number 2 uh, 30 i have written here then uh, you can see the result is pc2 not in a network similarly you can change the subnet marks of any machines and you can check again the result here pc3 not in a network 
so I am again going to make the corrections here and evaluate. So now all the machines are in network. Similarly, you can do for the class B. I am going to click on class B, click on submit and you can find the new network ID is generated in class B. So use this network ID. So similarly, uh, check, uh, change the subnet mask. And now evaluate. So all are in uh, network. Now uh, change any one value here to get uh, the results and evaluate it. So you can find now PC3 not in a network. So similarly you can do for the class A when you select the class A and you, uh, when you click on submit the new network ID is generated. You have to use this network ID to give the addresses, IP addresses to the machine as well as accordingly you have to change the subnet marks and check the result. So this is experiment number one. The experiment number two uh, from this particular uh, web page you have to be select the lab under construction so when you click on this this page will be open here many virtual labs are given you have to be select the virtual lab for network the computer network lab when you click on this tab this page will be open you have to click on explore when you uh, click here then this page will be open here four experiments are given i am going to demonstrate only one experiment configuration of table you have to click on this configuration on table then this window will be open here also same tabs are given aim the aim of experiment theory related to that particular topic so please ask the student just go through the th theory to get the more knowledge uh, about that topic then pre-test is also there Procedure of experiment is also given, simulation is also given and post test. So for simulation click on this link, click here. So when you click this page will be open. Here you have to be select the devices which is used for this particular experiment RG, RG45 connector, crimping tool, LAN tester and cable. If I select the switch. So this is a wrong device which is not used for this particular experiment. Then go to next. Then here you have to select the cable. The three type of cable are given straight, cross and roll over. I am just going to select the straight. Now you have to select the color code. So first is uh, orange white. Same will be here orange white because this is a straight cable. Then orange, select it here orange. Then next is uh, green white. Then select it the green white. Then next is blue. Select here blue. Next blue white. Select here blue white. Next is green. Here also green. After that, uh, brown white. Here also brown white. And the last one is the brown. So now I have select the color code for both switch port and PC. Now you have to check whether uh, your selection is correct or not. So for that, you need to click here on this red button. And you can find here the bubbles color gauge change from pink to green green means what combination you have selected what color code you have selected are correct now did you made right cable yes because all the bubbles turn into green in color so just click on okay 
so table is right okay. so similarly you can do it for the cross as well as the roll over so this is a second experiment configuration of table in the same way you can execute other experiments given here to get the more knowledge regarding that particular subject what the topic you taught during the lecture that also you can demonstrate using vlab and also this vlab is very much useful for practicals thank you all thank you for listening me hello everyone my name is tanvi tarkunde and i am a mentor at vlabs digitizers a short intro about myself i have successfully completed audit course for virtual labs i have been the member of virtual labs digitizer forum since 2020 I have been certified by IIT Bombay for HTML advanced CPT and Python 3.4.3. Now I would like to introduce Professor Geeta Narayanan ma'am. She has been the associate professor at Biomedical Department at Vidyalankar Institute of Technology. She has completed BTech in Electrical Engineering from Government Engineering College Thrissur, Kerala in 1991. She has also completed M.Tech in Power Electronics from NIT Calicut in 1994. She has an experience of 28 years in Mumbai University. She has been the HOD of the department for around 8 years. Her subjects of interest are digital design, very large scale integrated circuits, control systems, robotics, embedded systems and IoT. Her papers have been published around 20 publications out of which 7 to 8 are in IEEE now i would request geeta ma'am to say a few words hello everyone i am professor geeta narayanan from vidyalankar institute of technology mumbai i am the nodal coordinator for virtual labs at vidyalankar today i am going to explain and demonstrate a lab programmable logic controller lab and i am going to concentrate on experiment implementation of logic gates this lab is coming under discipline electrical engineering before going into the lab let me thank virtual labs iit bombay and pvg college of engineering pune for giving me an opportunity to explain and demonstrate programmable logic controller lab in this workshop programmable logic controller lab is developed by coep pune and it is available at this particular website programmable logic controller lab is mapped to the subject industrial automation in msbt the course code is 22534 and it is coming under fifth semester this subject is elective for electrical electronics and telecommunication branches whereas it is compulsory subject for instrumentation systems and instrumentation control let us go into this particular programmable logic controller lab on virtual lab website so to go to this particular lab you have to go to google and type virtual lab iit bombay this is the site virtual lab iit bombay you have to click on this then virtual lab iit bombay site will open here if you click on labs it will show the different disciplines in discipline electrical engineering if you click you can see all the labs which are associated with electrical engineering discipline if you scroll down you can see the plc lab plc is the programmable logic controller lab so when you click on programmable logic controller lab this page will open this is giving a small introduction to the lab in this lab we will demonstrate ladder programming we will implement logic gates dol starter online on delay timer off delay timer up and down counter and many more now let us go into the list of experiments if you open the list of experiments there are eight experiments in this particular uh, lab so first experiment is a study hardware and software used in plc second experiment is the 
sub the experiment which we are going to consider that is implementation of logic gates and i will go through other experiments also there are experiments ex implementation of d oil starter implementation of on delay timer implementation of off delay timer up down counter arithmetic of uh, instructions pid controller etc let us go to the experiment implementation of logic gates and click on that if you click on this implementation of logic ex logic gates experiment this page is opening here if you see on this page on left side there are many tabs which are given which can be clicked to see the aim of the experiment pre test theory simulator procedure audio video etc so if you click these are similar to the lab manual we give to our students during the practical so they can virtually see the lab manual so if you click on aim it is giving the aim and objective of the experiment then there is a pre test given in the pre test there are five questions given so this we can test the level of the students before doing the experiment by looking at the score they are getting in the pre test i am randomly clicking the values the inputs Uh, the answers and then i'm submitting it when i submit i will be getting my score i can view the solution i'm not getting full score so i can take the quiz again or i can also view the solution so in view the solution i'm getting this output and i can take the quiz again so it will be taking you to the same quiz again next tab is theory in the theory tab extensively the theory is explained about the experiment so there are two parts of theory one is the logic operation the digital electronics required and the other part is about the theory about the plc ladder programming so in the digital electronics part they have explained about the logic and then development of logic then truth tables and then boolean laws and boolean basic laws are explained and in the plc they have given all the instructions relay logic instructions and how we are doing the ladder programming this type of ladder one rung of the ladder and they have given all the relay instructions normally open contact normally close contact output coil output negated latch unlatch all these instructions are given in the theory in the next tab the next tab is simulator i'm just opening the simulator in a new window so that i can see this procedure and the tab together before going into the simulator i will go to the procedure in the procedure all the important steps for doing that experiment is explained very nicely so the pre experiment you have to prepare the ladder diagram for all these logic operations on a paper and then we have to start with the experiment and when we start the experiment it is showing the opening window if you go to the simulator and see the opening window you can see the opening window is like this and that is screenshot is shown here then what is the next step you have to add a rung so that is given then for how to add a component is given then how to give the input the name to the component is given and how to test the output is given and how to create another uh, ladder is given so all these things are given in a very step by step manner very nicely explain the procedure now next tab is audio video audio video in this particular case is not provided next is post test so after doing the experiment what the students understood can be found out by doing this particular post test and looking at the score of the post test we can make out what is the level of understanding of our students after that they have also given some review questions which the students can search and find out in textbooks or in uh, on websites they can search and find out answers for these questions they have also given the different references used for this experiment and there is a feedback form also so let us go to the procedure and try to do the experiment implementation of logic gates i will explain the implementation of and gate and or gate on the simulator 
So the first step is according to the procedure is to add a rung. So in this when you open the window you can see there are different inputs here. This is an add rung. There is normally open contact, normally closed contact, then output. And these are the, uh, the components required for realizing a logic function. On right side, we are having open, save, compile, run, development. So run and development are two different environments. In run mode, it will not allow you to develop and in develop, there is no running. So we have to take a new run. I added a run. Now I have to give input AND gate. For AND gate, two inputs are connected in series. So I am considering normally open contact. And I am giving two inputs like this in series and one output I am connecting. If I am connecting here, it will show that it cannot be placed in the middle. You have to place it at the end only. So it is giving the error messages also. So I have made the rung for that. Now I have to give the, input, the, uh, the name to these inputs. I have to tag it as, we can call it as A. Right click, tag, B and here again right click, tag, out1. So my ladder diagram for AND gate is ready. After completing the ladder diagram, I have to compile the ladder diagram. So it is giving me compiled successfully. So I press OK. Now I can run. I am running the code. So when I am running the code, there is a green line coming here. That means the ladder rung is energized. It is already energized. So I have to just give the input. How to give the input? This is open. So 0. B is open. So 0. So what I have to give? I have to toggle it and make it as 1. So now A is 1. I am toggling and making B also 1. So when both A and B are 1, my output is also high. So my AND gate is implemented. Now if I want to add one more uh, gate to this particular ladder diagram, I can click on development. So that green line has gone. I can add a rung. And let us consider we have to add an OR gate. Or we can even create any Boolean logic expression also. So if you want to add an OR gate, we need to connect these switches in parallel. So for that, I have to add a parallel block here. So for plus if I click, then the parallel block has come. I am going to give the same input A and B on the parallel line. And output is connected here. And now I am going to tag it also with the same name so that you will come to know that they are linked together. If you are giving the same name, they will be linked together. So that is what we are doing. And here also I am tagging it. I am making it as out 2. And submit. So my ladder diagram is ready for AND gate and OR gate also. Now I am going to combine. So compiled successfully. Now I have to run. When I run, both the runs are energized. Now you can see that since the same tag is given, if I toggle this switch A, this is also toggled. And it is an OR gate, so either A or B is a 1, the output will be 1. And AND gate will be on only when both A and B are 1, so that is also working. Now here you can give beyond this, you can give any other logic expression also to realize and the students will be developing the logic and then they will be realizing using this particular ladder diagram. So those things can be done in this particular experiment. Now let us see one more experiment. If I go to the same list of experiments, I can see there are DOL starter is there and then delay timer is also there. Let us just see how the delay timer is utilized. So if you are theory I am just skipping and then I am going to the simulator. 
Here they have given about the different timers. There is a on delay timer, off delay timer. Here this is an on delay timer. That means it will be on for some time, for the specified time. After that the delay will be that uh, after that delay the contact will be switched on. So it is on delay timer. There are three. Uh, there is a T on. There is an enable and there is a DN also. DN means done. Timer timing is the TT. So, if you go to the simulator, if you go to the simulator, we can see that basic, that is adding rung and all, and counter is also available. So, in basic, we can add a rung. And in the counter timer, if you go, this T on can be placed here. So, the T on has come. So, in the T on, there are done timer timing and enable. So, I have to give an enable and then I can see the output which is coming. Okay. So, for knowing this DN and TT, I need two more contacts and two more outputs. First of all, let us configure this. For configuration, I have to give a name T1. I am giving T1, timer 1 and I have to give a preset time also. So, I am just giving 1000 milliseconds as the time. So, the timer delay, the, the contact will be closed after 1000 seconds. So, I am just adding run and then I am testing it. For that, first I need one for enabling and another one for the done, timer done and another run can be used for timer counting. TT. So, I can tag. So, there can be some output also so that we can see whether that is working or not. So, I am just connecting some outputs also. Now, I am going to mouse. So, this will be the enable. So, I will just give enable. I am just give enable. It is an enabling for the timer. And these are, one is T1, Dn and this is T1, Tt. So, I have to give tag T1 underscore Dn and T1 underscore Tt. So, I have given the names. Now, here I am giving tag as out1. And out2. So, what will happen? Till the time reaches 1000, your T1, TT will be on and out2 will be on. And when the time reaches 1000, the T1, DN will be on and this out1 will be on. On. So, that is the effect we can see. So, I am just compiling this circuit. Compiled successfully. Now, I am running this. So, when I am running this, you can see if I enable this. So, till it reaches 1000, this was on. So, I am just disabling this. Disabling this. And when I am enabling Till it reaches 1000, this was on and once it is reached 1000, that is done. The timer done will be on. Hope you have understood the programmable logic controller lab and beyond the experiments list which are given in the, uh, in the list of the experiments, we can also give any ladder diagram development type of uh, problem statement to the students and students can explore on uh, the development of ladder diagram by using this programmable logic controller lab. It is giving an environment in which the students can develop ladder diagram. Hope you have understood my explanation. Thank you for listening. Thank you. A very warm welcome to everyone. I am Shubham Kothari. Head at the VLabs Digitizers Forum at TBG SOET and GKPIM. I would like to give a brief introduction about myself. 
I have been a member of the Students Club at PVG COET and GKPIM since 2019 and the head at the VLabs Digitizers Forum. I am also a mentor as well as a student trainer for the VLabs Digitizers. I have been a senior trainer for the Putathon Knockdown the Lockdown 1 and 2 organized by IID Bombay. I along with my team have been awarded the Platinum Developer Certificate in the first ever Putathon organized by Virtual Labs for the Digital Logic Design using Logic Gates Virtual Lab. I have also developed the Integrated Circuits Analysis Virtual Lab. Along with all this, I have also been uh, certified by the Spoken Tutorial IID Bombay for courses like HTML, CSS, C, C++, Python and Arduino to name. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce to you all Dr. Abhilasha Mishra, who is Associate Professor and Head at the Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering at Maharashtra Institute of Technology, Aurangabad. After completing B from MIT Gondia, Ma'am pursued her higher education ME from Government College of Engineering, Aurangabad in 2000. Later, Ma'am completed her PhD in Antenna Designing from Kavitri Bahina Bhai Chaudhary, North Maharashtra University, Jalgaon in 2013. She is a regional coordinator for the Marathwada region. Ma'am has published 55 research papers on various topics like antenna technology, image processing, remote sensing, and optical fiber communication. She has also published two patents in the Indian Patent Public. Ma'am is a recipient of the Best Paper Award in the three IEEE conferences ICMO 2017, IEEE IAW 2013, IEEE INC EMIC 2018. She has received the prestigious IET Professor S. N. Mitra Memorial Award in 2013 for her outstanding contribution and leadership role in radio broadcast science and technology during the last 10 years. Ma'am has also developed the first virtual lab of the Marathwada region which is hosted by the IID Bombay portal. Ma'am has organized IEEE conferences of world repute that is the IEEE Indian Antenna Week 2013 and IEEE Applied Electromagnetics Conference in 2017. The resource persons were from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, NASA, San Diego University, IITs and NITs. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Abhilasha Mishra, Regional Coordinator Marathwada Region Virtual Labs IIT Bombay. I welcome you all on this Virtual Labs Outreach Workshop. Today I am here to discuss with you about the roles and responsibilities of Nodal Center. The main objectives of the virtual lab project is to provide the remote access to the labs in various disciplines of humanities, science and engineering. It aims to cater at the UG level, PG level as well as to the research scholars. So the labs of various domains are available to the students. It also enables to the students to learn at their own pace and to arouse their curiosity 24 by 7. It's a complete learning management system that includes web resources, animated demonstrations and self-evaluation. In a nutshell, if we look towards the virtual lab, so what are the value added in a nutshell? So let's have a look on it. It's a complete integrated learning management system. So content is available at one place. It includes animation and video tutorials to give the better insight to the students. It allows the students to make the mistakes so they are learning from the experiments. Self-evaluation quizzes are available. So before the performance of the experiment, student will learn how much knowledge he has and after performing the practical through virtual lab, he can test his knowledge with the help of post lab quiz. So it's a self evaluation system. It makes students more confident about the learning system. It's an on demand lab which is available at 24 by 7 and students can learn at their own pace. There are various regional centers under IIT Bombay 
लाइक पीवीजी पुणे गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी एम आई टी और डीवाई पाटिल मुंबई एंड एम एस यू बड़ोदा एटसेट्रा लेट्स लुक ऑन की बेनिफिट टू द इंस्टीट्यूट थ्रू वर्चुअल लैब मिशन If you are getting associated with the virtual lab so you are contributing in a national mission of ICT education and you are collaborating with MHRD's project once you are getting associated definitely you will you will be contributing in virtual lab development and the usages that is performance by the students in virtual labs so once you start these activities so you will get credit for your institute in nba and nac evaluation once you work in content development so this is the technical development for whole community students can also use and faculties can also use internship opportunities are available to the students of your institute with iit bombay and associated regional centers and once you contribute you will get the nation wide visibility of your own institute role of virtual lab nodal center as we belong to maharashtra region we are associated with iit bombay so virtual lab iit bombay is an apex body under which the regional centers and nodal centers come so after iit bombay it comes the regional center the regional center is taken care by regional coordinator and regional technical coordinator the nodal center care has been taken by nodal coordinator and nodal technical coordinator so under regional center there are various nodal centers available in the region under the nodal center as it is the main center at the institute level various departments come and department has to nominate one coordinator from each respective department the course coordinator of the department will work on the syllabus content and try to identify the syllabus available in virtual labs so by mapping the syllabus he can work on the performance of the virtual lab with the students either if labs are not available he can think of developing the labs and once the syllabus is mapped the student will perform the virtual lab in coordination with the course coordinator and after performance the student will submit the online feedback this is how the virtual lab system works on so stakeholders and their role the nodal coordinator has been nominated by the director or head of the institution the nodal technical coordinator supports technically to perform the virtual labs in the center he also aims to develop the content with the help of students and faculties of the institute departmental coordinator is coordinating the virtual lab activities of the respective course with the help of the course coordinators and course coordinator will train the students to perform the virtual lab and also student will get training to develop the contents and this is how everyone is participating in the virtual lab development and virtual lab performance if you wish to have the nodal center see the, so the nodal center setup requirements or eligibility for this is you don't have to pay anything for having the virtual lab at your institute so no financial liability free access of the lab is available to everyone and student the uh, institute cannot charge the students for the virtual lab so everything is available freely to all the students procedure to establish a nodal center 
So if you wish to go for the Nettle Center, you have to conduct one outreach workshop by Regional Center. Regional Center will provide the feedback to IIT Bombay. The credentials for the expression of interest will be issued to head of the institution where he will select the nodal center coordinator and the nodal center technical coordinator. So selection of nodal center under regional center will be uh, accepted by the IIT Bombay and commencement of the nodal center activity will carry on by the nodal coordinator. And institute's group of department coordinators will support this activity and provide the training on virtual labs that is also called as in-house workshop to the faculties and students on reg at regular intervals. So the responsibility of nodal center plays a very important role in having the maximum usages and the content development. So the nodal coordinator is the main interface between the outreach team of virtual labs IIT Bombay and the nodal center in association with regional center. The execution of training sessions for the students and faculty members of the institute can be conducted by the nodal coordinator. The training session can be conducted for the staff members and the students. So he has to popularize the virtual labs among the students and the field testing of the labs can be supported at the institute level and the feedback can be submitted to the center. So support in testing and debugging virtual labs while using them. A monthly progress report has to be submitted by the nodal coordinator. So this is called as the virtual labs usage. How much lab has been used by the particular student. So complete calculation of this usages has to be submitted as a monthly progress report to the IIT Bombay through the portal. Which has to be signed duly by the director or head of the institution. The virtual lab nodal center has to conduct one workshop per semester as an outreach activity of the virtual lab. The faculty members and students from nearby places and institutions will participate in this workshop. So virtual lab will get wide coverage to the all the levels of the institutes. The targeted attendees in each workshop can be approximately 100 and it can exit as well. The list of participants should be shared with IIT Bombay and the uh, images of the workshop can be shared. So nodal centers will coordinate workshop and if required the outreach team from IIT Bombay may contribute. The usage target more than 8000 per year has to be there and it can be covered from January to December. So at the end of the year, the, we can target the usages of 8000 approximately. So intimation of workshop dates and other training session has to be reported to IIT Bombay. And the workshop conduction report has to be submitted by including the relevant photographs, and the template is shared by the IIT Bombay. So these are some of the labs developed by uh, Team MIT. So this is how you can get the worldwide visibility about the developed labs for your institute. This is the computer networks lab developed by the Team MIT. So Maharashtra Institute of Technology is getting wide coverage of visibility to all the virtual lab stakeholders. The virtual lab team at IIT Bombay including the remote cen uh, centers and nodal centers work on the transparent system. This particular format has been developed by the two faculties, those who belong to the remote centers. Now the name you can see at the bottom of this format this will appear at all the time. 
so though this has been developed in 2020 but still it is going on and we are using it by the same name so transparency is definitely maintained at virtual lab so if you are contributing in any domain with any perspective of content development or any kind of suggestions so that are welcomed by the team virtual labs so you can target to have the mega outreach program allotment of the nodal center by iit bombay initial usage count at the allotted nodal center outreach program can be conducted nodal centers faculty can contribute in virtual lab development and content development internship opportunities is available fully functional student coders group yes we can target our students to work in a group for coding that is content development so it is not that only institutes students will work for that iit bombay wish to have the multidisciplinary and multi level involvement of the students so student from your institute other regional centers and other nodal centers can work in a group to have the content development and in future the nodal center can switch over by its performance to the new regional center so this is how the team of uh, virtual labs at iit bombay works on so an institute can plan to map whole syllabus of all the streams in virtual labs so that will be very much beneficial for the uh, university if we distribute our content development group wise and plan to develop the virtual labs so as i told you we get the wide visibility so abhasi is the biannual newsletter published by iit delhi who has initiated this virtual lab activity in the beginning so it gives you the wide coverage if your institute works on content development either it organizes the boot camp either there is the coders group and many more activities we are associated with so you can see that the iit bombay has announced the shining nodal centers pvg institute and the maharashtra institute of technology that is mit aurangabad so these two institutes have been nominated as shining nodal centers so this is one of the achievement of both the institute so wide visibility but there is a question what are the technical requirements so that we can set up a virtual lab at our institute so nodal center setup requirement is designated common lab space has to be available with minimum 40 pcs and 2 mbps broadband connection audio visual facility with multimedia projector is essential if internet operates behind the firewall we need to take care about some specific sport uh, ports like 3306 5900 5902 and 8700 access to gmail and facebook should be available and java should be in downloadable form so already i discussed this responsibility at nodal center so you are the interface between the outreach program and iit bombay execution of training sessions you have to popularize the virtual labs support for field testing the labs testing and debugging of virtual labs monthly progress report needs to be submitted by the nodal center organization of workshop per semester is essential increasing the usage of vlabs minimum to the 8000 and maximum at your level can be think of so technical skills for content development which is required for the students and faculties are student development developer should have the knowledge of fos resources such as typescript html git source code editor sketching and faculty developer can have the basic knowledge of resources such as MS Office sketching and drawing tools and how the pedagogy contents can be written. So IIT team trains all the faculties and students for the content development. These are some of the virtual labs available at IIT Bombay. So you can visit here and some of the labs at the vlab.com. So I wish all of you to have the happy going with virtual labs and please come forward 
the uh, students and faculties have a great potential to contribute the content development so i request all of you to let us all contribute in nation building through the virtual labs community thank you if you want you can reach to manager virtual labs iit bombay at this manager1 at vlabsdev.in thank you hello i am shravani currently a third year engineering student at pvg coet and gk pati vani college of management pune i am a member of vlab digitizers forum since 2020 i am the technical head and mentor at vlab i have developed experiments in robotics and medicine lab i have served as a junior trainer at bootathon knockdown the lockdown organized by virtual labs iit bombay i have been certified for html cpp c arduino by spoken tutorials iit bombay now i would like to introduce professor manish nagoshe sir professor manish nagoshe sir is an assistant professor in department of mechanical engineering at pune vidyarthi gruhas college of engineering and technology and gk pim pune he is working as an assistant professor in department of mechanical engineering and has a total work experience of over 22 years he is nominated as the first regional technical coordinator in the country by iit bombay virtual labs he is playing a key role to promote development activities across the country he has developed around 50 virtual lab experiment for the fundamental subjects such as javascript fluid mechanics strength of material analytics and synthesis of mechanism numerical method etc he has been a part of three development workshop three boot camps three bootathon related activities where he has trained more than 800 students across the country he has been training to college students of forum vlab digitizers as a result of which students have developed eight labs under his mentorship he is a programmer and mentor of development of 13 labs he has designed a framework which enables the programmer to develop lab in easy pos least possible time he is playing a key role in development collaboration maintaining pipeline automation testing and hosting virtual labs through various suitable technologies he has received certifications of development of virtual labs by iit bombay he is working as a receiver for new virtual lab development on vlab dev iit bombay over to you nagoshe sir thank you hello everyone greetings of the day thank you shravani so today i am going to talk about the vlab stay so two major activities we are uh, having under the vlab stay first one is the bootathon where the faculties and student participates uh, to de develop the virtual labs faculty will have uh, different rounds and the student will have a uh, the another try the faculty will go through the all the pedagogical aspects designing of experiments and so on so there are total 6 uh, rounds for uh, students as well as the faculty and each round is qualifying after the uh, completion of the training uh then the process of development starts and the coding part will be taken by the students so faculty may get a students from various different colleges to design and develop the virtual labs the, the student which performs better will also get an opportunity as a internship from the iit bombay this is the one of the forum under the vlab sphere at our college we call that forum as a vlab digitizer forum so currently 148 plus students from our college are uh, working under this forum and these are the some of the students uh, been highlighted on a vlab dev team page 
please do visit this page how the this student forum actually works so students from all discipline basically selected through an interview process so virtual lab activity is not limited to a specific branch but it is a multidisciplinary activity and therefore students from all all disciplines are required each discipline student will have a certain important role to play the second year students who actually develops the virtual labs does the documentation and are the trainers to the students third year students are the project managers they do lot of internship they train and mentor the second year student for various other higher level programming languages and the uh, courses these uh, students are more important to develop new technologies designing a new framework which helps the second year student to develop virtual labs final year students are uh, called as uh, v lab heads they are the basically to mentors to t students and they are basically a resource person for the boot camp so here one great uh, level uh, opportunity the students get it so basically in national level bootathon uh, these students works as a mentor and the resource person uh, to conduct the national events basically they conduct uh, all kinds of training in the bootathon the projects uh, which they do it uh, under their leadership third year students also get participated so that the legacy from final year to third year uh, to second year to first year uh, continues so the knowledge transfer uh, do takes place as they are working cohesively uh, uh, together so what kind of uh, technologies the student are supposed to use in this uh, to develop the virtual lab that is one of the biggest question in everybody's mind so we are using the most simplest technology html css and javascript of course those technologies are simple but the uh, we do require a specific uh, and specialized knowledge uh, in the html css and javascript area uh, recently we added the um, working with the typescript so uh, now we are not using a javascript but we are using a typescript uh, to handle the javascript code basically the course uh, which we have designed is also recognized as a uh, audit course under the uh, spp university syllabus most important aspect is the training given by the student for the student so this forum is totally run by the student my responsibility is to add the new content to the, this container and this container grows on its own it is open to all engineering uh, disciplines the technologies they studied right from first year to final year uh, in this forums are listed as as so it start with the html then various database technology then various web based technology log, like uh, php django various uh, uh, phone develop uh, technology like android java programming then they go with the pythons for machine learning project so now the machine learnings are being introduced uh, into a virtual lab as well as uh, this machine learning projects uh, uh, helps in their third year and final year projects they are getting training like arduino and raspberry pi for I developing iot applications various uh, modeling softwares like solid works 3d experience uh, they do study and various analysis tool like ansys abacus uh, which they grow through it in this forum also robotics and uh, courses related to artificial intelligence are uh, conducted which helps the student to grow in all directions recently we have also introduced dotnet application development 
which uh, students are uh, studying and getting the benefit of those technologies. After such a uh, rigorous work, uh, it is bound to happen that uh, these students get the better opportunity like internships, development of projects from the virtual lab and various project opportunities uh, related to internship is also provided by the IITB. This training basically helps the student to tackle uh, internships and various projects and which help them to grow uh, in a more brighter way. As far as placement record for virtual VLAB Digitizer Forum is considered, it's a 100 plus uh, per percent placement every year. So being a part of student forum, it gives a massive advantage over the other student uh, because of multidisciplinary activity. It inculcates confidence and various striking personality which are uh, favorable to the various recruiters. These are the some of the highlights of the student project uh, which uh, I would like to mention. So VLabs Day on VLabs Outreach Portal is been designed by the students of VLab Digital Forum. They are uh, one of the they have played one of the most important role uh, uh, developing uh, these portals. They have contributing in development of uh, Argo robot. EDU robot, quadcopter, hexapod. The students of this forum has contributed and published international journal papers. It also helps me because uh, they are also getting certification from uh, various courses through IITB and various other organizations and that helped me immense because uh, to acquire the project from any bigger organization that I do have a certified student in those uh, specialized technologies. So Naho Bionic Arm and Mitra was a special project. Uh, Bionic Arm was sponsored by La, Fond La Foundation France and Mitra was one of the special projects in the robotics area. These are the sum of the projects which I would like to show you. Dance for us. Raspberry Pi and the motors through relay. We are using relay to control the motors from the Raspberry Pi and its power is taken from the uh, power bank. The Raspberry there is a lot of achievement by the students of uh, this forum. So some of the uh, highlights I would like to read out. Six students from our college completed an uh, internship at IIT Bombay and contributed to development of VLAPS Joe portal uh, which is used nationwide. Currently five students are also working with now uh, new and bigger portal uh, with the IIT Bombay. 11 students from our college contributed to VLabs Outreach Portal. Uh, 3 students delivered the session on Mind, mind Map uh, at first national level bootcamp at Raj, Rajkot. One student uh, was invited uh, for the second national uh, level bootcamp at Ahmedabad. Two students were invited at the third national level bootcamp at Aurangabad. 20 students were invited as a mentor speaker for national bootathon 1, 2, 3. Five students received platinum certificate in bootathon for completing their virtual lab within stipulated time. 
Eight virtual labs have been developed by the students. In all, 40 students are recognized as a developer. Now that number has grown to 55. Two teams participated in <coughs> second boot camp, and the one team participated in third boot camp. All all of the team has uh, submitted their projects. Students have achieved certification from IIT B Spoken Tutorial in uh, various technologies. Four students successfully delivered the project from Rasol system where they make the bionic uh, arm for the amputees. Students have received the funded projects from IEEE and other academic institutions. Students have developed and hosted Android app on the Google Play stores. Uh, so it is proud moment to say that the uh, till now date uh, the highest package uh, salary is offered to this uh, student from this forum. And this is the photograph and we call this as the team. Uh, the team is massive. Join virtual labs, stay connected with new thinking, new possibilities. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Ronak Murray and I'd like to begin with a short introduction of mine. I am a second year comm student at Pune Vidyati Gruha College of Engineering and Technology. I have successfully completed the audit course for virtual labs and I have been a member of the VLAB committee since around February 2021. I am also a certified HTML developer by IIT Bombay. Going forward, I'd like to introduce Professor Tanuja Khatavkar. She is an assistant professor in the Electronics and Telecommunication Department at Pune Vidyati Gruha College of Engineering and Technology. Katavkar ma'am is a passionate teacher with about 30 years of teaching experience and is a Cambridge certified teacher trainer. She is nominated as the first regional virtual lab coordinator in the country by IIT Bombay Virtual Labs. The PVG's team under her leadership mentors about 58 virtual lab nodal centers affiliated to various universities in Maharashtra. More than 30 virtual experiments were developed by Katavkar ma'am and the student forum are published by IIT Bombay Virtual Labs team and hosted on the VLAB dev platform. Khatavkar ma'am and her students team at PVG Squared backed the Platinum certification at the first National Virtual Lab Bootathon at REC Bandana, Uttar Pradesh in November 2019. Khatavkar ma'am has a remarkable contribution as a certified mentor slash viewer in the Virtual Lab Committee development model right from the three development workshop held at Pune, Mumbai and MSU, Broda. Followed by the three consecutive national bootathons at Marwadi University at Rajkot, Gujarat University in Ahmedabad, and MIT in Aurangabad. Following that, recently on 7th September 2021, MAM was also awarded the most prestigious award of Adarsha Shikshak Puraskar by the International Association of Lions Club. I'd now like, I'd now request uh, Khatavkar MAM to say a few words. Greetings to one and all. While working on collaborative projects, this quote by Swami Vivekananda strikes my mind. A nation is advanced in proportion to education and intelligence spread among the masses. Project Virtual Labs is an initiative of Ministry of Education under the National Mission on Education through ICT. Myself, Professor Tanuja Sachin Khatavkar, Regional Coordinator for Pune Region from Pune Vidyarthi Grahas College of Engineering and Technology and GK Patewani Institute of Management, would like to present the Regional Centre success story. The Regional Centre is affiliated to Virtual Labs IIT Bombay and is working in coordination with IIT Bombay for last seven years. So I'll be giving you a brief overview of this success story of RCID 01 and NCID 20. That is a regional center ID 01 and nodal center ID 20, which is affiliated to Virtual Labs IIT Bombay. I would like to quote here that PVG COAT is the first regional center 
designated by Virtual Labs IIT Bombay in the country. Well, the journey started in uh, 2015 as a nodal center. So in 2015 and 2016, we worked as nodal center and based on the performance of the nodal center in terms of rollout and also an initiative of development of new virtual labs, the center was designated as regional nodal center from 2017 onwards. So right from 2017 for the next 2018, 19, 20, and even this year, we are the regional center affiliated to Virtual Labs IIT Bombay. Working with IIT Bombay, we took ahead the rollout program, that is VLAB rollout program, to all types of colleges. They were private colleges, aided institutes or university affiliated institutes. Some of them were actually universities or deemed institutes or they had autonomous uh, or they were autonomous. We not only took rollout activity for faculty from different colleges, but also in association with IIT Bombay, we had a massive Nodal Coordinators Outreach Workshop, Pan India. Another massive rollout is the Savitribai Phule Pune University Engineering and Science Technology, the rollout for these engineering colleges, and also the one which we are talking about is the Polytechnic Colleges. The statistics for the workshop for Polytechnic Institutes uh, reveals that nearly 76% of the participants belong to Maharashtra, then 16% of them, they belong to Gujarat and 8% of the uh, institutes or the faculty are from Tamil Nadu. Well, the cities to which these colleges belong to, these polytechnic institutes belong to, have been mapped in this particular uh, graph. So here you'll observe that most of the colleges uh, are from Pune, they are from Pune, some from Kolhapur, then you'll find some from Mumbai and also we find colleges from Gujarat like Ahmedabad, Baruch, Baroda and on this side from Tamil Nadu, colleges from Tamil Nadu, they have participated in the polytechnic uh, workshop. Rollout was one of the factors that we took ahead in coordination with IIT Bombay. In addition to that, one step or one mile, we can say we walked ahead and we took the initiative of developing virtual labs. So the development program began there. And we started with the journey of VLAB Dev with IIT Bombay uh, for the community development. This journey started with three pilot workshops, right? And these pilot workshops were conducted at PVG's Pune, then MSU Baroda, and also at VIT Mumbai. The boot camps, following this, we had the boot camps. The first boot camp we had at Marwadi University, the second boot camp we had Gujarat University, and the third boot camp we had at, had at MIT Aurangabad. So you will find there were three pilot workshops where we tried on a very uh, small scale, let us say 30 participants, uh, and we worked out this endeavor of development of virtual labs and observed the feasibility of development of virtual labs from the community, from different private colleges or different uh, universities coming together in a collaborative mode and developing the virtual labs. The success of these three pilot workshops uh, gave us the confidence of going for larger scale workshops such as boot camps, wherein people from uh, other colleges from Gujarat, that is Marwadi University, then um, Gujarat Technical University and MIT Aurangabad, they came ahead and they hosted these boot camps where PVG COET faculty and students they worked as resource persons, mentors, and reviewers, along with IIT Bombay team and the other regional teams. 
this development uh, program it did not stop here it uh, was also conducted as a bootathon later in uh, rc banda uttar pradesh boot camp plus hackathon is bootathon right so we had the first bootathon in uttar pradesh somewhere in around to the november 2019 and here during this uh, bootathon the last phase of that boot bootathon we had it in the online mode actually because of certain reasons the ktl1 and ktl2 are the knocked down the lockdown bootathon 1 and bootathon 2 which were conducted during the covid period in an online mode this development workshops uh, were not only conducted uh, to explain the pedagogy and the storyboard that has to be designed by the faculty uh, who teaches the subject but also had the training programs for the students where they learn the technologies that are required to develop the virtual labs now to enable students to uh, come up or uh, to equip them with the technologies to de develop the virtual labs web development national level program was conducted by pvg cuit the beauty of this program was students from first year who had taken up this course of web development who had taken the training they conducted this workshop for students all over india we can say because we had a massive participation of more than uh, 6000 students had registered for the event and more than and i can i can say 3500 students were actually certified for this program the regional center at pvg cuit has ensured the students fruitful engagement through this portfolio of virtual labs so if we just look at this chart the participation and the mentoring that the students have done at different workshops uh, you'll find that the first pilot workshop was initiated by pvg cuit then followed by thane uh, vit well uh, vidyalankar institute of technology thane and uh, msu baroda this was the these were the first three pilot workshops that i was talking about earlier so that time we had one team from pvg which participated for the development of workshop under the mentorship of the faculty in the college then we had the first national boot camp at marwadi university rajkot somewhere in february 2018 in gujarat this was the first national boot camp where the students you know three students they gave sessions on mind maps how to create mind maps for the virtual lab that the faculty are going to develop so the students they gave an online mind map session to faculty who had participated in the national boot camp at uh, rajkot gujarat in the second national boot camp which was conducted uh, at ahmedabad in jan uh, 2019 we had one student who was invited as a, a student mentor for the program and in this boot camp we had two teams who participated uh, for the development of virtual labs following this in february 2019 immediately we had the third national boot camp at mit aurangabad in this we had two students who mentored the students uh, from different uh, colleges to develop the virtual labs and two teams from pvg cuit participated in the boot camp so we had three pilot workshops followed by three uh, boot camps the success of these led us to the next version of the boot camps that is a bootathons so the first national bootathon was held at rc banda lucknow in uttar pradesh in uh, september 2019 so here again two students other two students were invited as student mentors and one team participated in this boot bootathon well it gives me immense pleasure to mention that this group of students they received the platinum certification Uh, in this event 
During COVID-19, when everything was under lockdown, we ensured through virtual labs that the students would be effectively engaged. And this was possible just because of the support of virtual labs, IIT Bombay team and the management of Pune Vidyarthi Grants College of Engineering and Technology and GKPIM Pune. The next two Bhutathons, which were called the Knockdown the Lockdown, that is Bhutathon 1 and Bhutathon 2, they were conducted in April and May 2009, uh, 2020. During this program, nearly 11 students, you know, uh, 11 students were certified as senior trainers by uh, VLabs IIT Bombay and 8 students were certified as junior trainers. During the next bootathon, that is the second bootathon we can say, 14 students were certified as senior trainers and 24 students were certified as junior trainers. So during COVID-19, faculty from different institutes, they had participated in this bootathon to come up with the pedagogy, the storyboard for the uh, experiments they would like to develop. And the students from PVG COET, they took up the mission of translating these pedagogies and these um, storyboards into interactive simulators. Hence, they were certified by IIT Bombay as either senior trainers or junior trainers. Not only the students were uh, effectively engaged, but even the faculty, they contributed effectively during COVID-19 lockdown. This gives me immense pleasure to mention the um, the participation of the students and the faculty from the regional team for the virtual labs project. So for five colleges, the outreach workshop in online mode was conducted in May 2020. This was the first time that the outreach workshop was conducted in online mode. Following that, we had a webinar series for faculty of Abdul Kalam Technological University, Uttar Pradesh in May 2020, where faculty from the regional center, they demonstrated and explained the virtual labs to the faculty from AKTU Uttar Pradesh. The KTL Bhutathon was the event which was conducted during COVID-19. During this, the faculty from regional center, that is PVG COET and GKPIM College were assigned or were selected as mentors and designated as reviewers for the labs being developed by the new uh, proposals or new proposals. Following that, we had a massive outreach workshop for the faculty of Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University in July 2020. And following that, we had a virtual labs, virtual labs outreach for the coordinators, for, which are associated with IIT Bombay. Nearly 240 noodle centers uh, with IIT Bombay. We had a workshop for all these 240 noodle centers. In association, undoubtedly, with the collaborative efforts of uh, different regional teams uh, associated with IIT Bombay. Well. We have one more program there that is internships with VLabs Dev, VLabs Dev, IIT Bombay. This is another uh, uh, avenue or opportunity for the students to work with IIT Bombay team. So in 1819, nearly six students completed their internship uh, with VLabs Dev team uh, in June uh, to September, during the duration of June to September 2018. And the outcome of this is the development of the VLabs Dev portal, which is used by all the nodal coordinators, which are associated, or the nodal centers, which are associated with IIT Bombay. Right now, uh, six students are pursuing their internship with VLabs Dev. As I mentioned earlier, on 17th and 18th July 2021, a national level two days workshop on introduction to web development was organized by the regional team at PVG COET 
by the students of the digitizers forum of pvgc oit and the outcome of this particular program was a participation of 3500 students and faculties from india whose assignments they were evaluated and they were graded by the team and they were certified this program was totally conducted by the students of first year engineering of the uh, virtual lab digitizers forum at pvgc oit these are some of the publications you'll find that the faculty and the students at pvgc oit they have come up with around 13 virtual labs like numerical methods digital applications network theory digital logic design using gates integrated circuits introduction to php computer graphics introduction to javascript material testing analysis and synthesis of mechanisms strength of materials and fluid mechanics you will find they are from different disciplines so faculty from different disciplines and students from different disciplines they work together in a collaborative mode so it's basically a multidisciplinary type of uh, uh, assignment you can say multidisciplinary type of project on which students from different departments faculty from different departments they come together and they develop the virtual labs now let me share with you the outcomes of this program at pvgc oit first outcome is a massive rollout of virtual labs more than 13000 students and faculties have been trained to use virtual labs and a usage of experiments that is performance of experiments of more than 1 lakh uh, has been performed alone at uh, pvgc oit uh, through internal in house programs as well as the outreach programs regional center pvgc oit could successfully establish around 60 nodal centers in maharashtra so various nodal centers from different parts of maharashtra especially the west zone of maharashtra except mumbai and aurangabad uh, we could identify potential uh, colleges as nodal centers as i mentioned 13 virtual labs were developed by the faculty and students at pvgc oit and gkpim which include more than 113 experiments so the e content development was to a very high extent created from the regional center of pvgc oit one of the best outcomes of virtual labs portfolio is the establishment of virtual labs digitizers forum that is a student club uh, somewhere around 2016 17 at the center more would be spoken about uh, the digitizers forum by the regional technical coordinator of pvg coit in addition to this digitizers forum wherein trainings uh, for different technologies were given by the uh, students to the students so it was a peer learning type of activity so senior students who were earlier trained by a faculty they train the next batch of students uh, in the vilak digitizers forum so the concept of peer learning multidisciplinary learning leadership now coding skills all these uh, were established through this forum called as vilak digitizers forum in order to equip the students with uh, proper um, proper technologies the uh, first training through spoken tutorial uh, certifications was also done in the college yes as i mentioned technology training uh, was one of the important aspects where students worked with html they worked with uh, uh, different technologies and um, they were trained by the peer teams in the vilak digitizers forum one of the most important outcomes is the creation of uh, virtual labs so virtual lab content creation is one of the uh, important outcomes of this virtual labs program yes undoubtedly the skills of the students you know there's upgrade of the skills in the students the coding skills the soft skills the interpersonal skills 
then the um, communication skills collaborative efforts you know working in collaboration peer uh, review peer learning all these skill sets uh, were are actually sharpened when the students be a part of virtual labs so one of the outcome which we can look at is a pool of collaborators and peer learners was created uh, at pvgcuit as i mentioned internship opportunities and resume building and mapping of the resume with the job descriptions is yet another outcome which gave them um, which gave them more networking uh, and also got good jobs for the students who have passed out of the institute in this success story i would like to also share some accolades pvg cuit and jkpim is the first private unaided institute to develop virtual labs in the country under we labs iit bombay it was declared the best performing shining nodal center by the abhasi mhrd we lab newsletter 2018 and 2019 as i mentioned earlier for one of the labs that is digital logic design using gates it was awarded the platinum certification during the bootathon at rc banda uttar pradesh so such accolades and many personal student you know individual student um, accolades are available at the regional center well these are the two links that you could use to access the virtual labs we can help you to become a nodal center you can reach us at vlabs@pvgcuit.ac.in the colleges who would like to be a part of the virtual lab program and would like to perform as nodal centers and uh, take the virtual labs to the uh, grassroots level pvg cuit team being the regional center can help you to bring on board as nodal center so kindly send your emails to vlabs@pvgcuit.ac.in yes at the end i would like to uh, give my special thanks to all those people who made these accolades achievable i thank the management of uh, pune vidyarthi grahas college of engineering and technology and gk patewani institute of management for giving us the strong support to work on this project of virtual labs consistently for last 7 years thanks from the entire team of v labs at pvg i thank dr santosh naruna sir the principal investigator for virtual labs at iit bombay i thank pushpadeep mishra sir and jay sir the project uh, senior project manager and project manager at uh, v labs iit bombay for giving us multiple opportunities for the students and faculty to take ahead virtual labs to bring all these accolades to the institute thanks to all the faculty and students and thanks to the community all the engineering colleges the polytechnics all the faculty and students uh, who have been a part of virtual labs community for giving us different opportunities to work with them in collaboration thank you thank you all Hello everyone I am Vaibhavi Mekhe from PVG CUET and JK Patewani Institute of Management I will give a quick introduction about myself I am third year student pursuing computer engineering degree at PVG CUET I am a member of Vlabs Digitizers forum since 2020 I am currently a mentor in Vlabs Digitizers I have completed audit course of virtual lab I am certified by IIT Bombay for Python, C++ and HTML. With this I would like to introduce honorable Shri Pushpadeep Mishra sir. He is project manager at Virtual Labs IIT Bombay. He has played a key role in outreach development and community engagement for Vlabs. 
Sir believes in work at grassroots level which mainly involves interacting with students and teachers and identifying problems and challenges faced in academic study. Sir's main focus has been on content development for virtual labs. With this I request honorable Shri Pushpadeep Mishra sir to say few words. Hello everyone and welcome to the uh, the workshop the outreach workshop uh, for polytechnics on virtual labs. Uh, I believe that you had a, a, a day long session already uh, learning about the fundamentals of virtual labs, the concepts behind it, the idea behind creating virtual lab and uh, some very good demonstrations by the uh, regional coordinators and the nodal coordinators uh, from various regions. So by now, uh, I think it's, it, is, it must have been very clear to uh, all of you that outreach is a very essential part of virtual labs. It is important so that the dissemination of uh, the virtual labs, the information is uh, passed on to the academic community, to the stu students and instructors. Well, uh, as you know that uh, from the previous talks also, you must have uh, uh, learned about that virtual labs uh, was started long back, uh, a decade long, a uh, decade before, uh, back in 2010. And uh, by 2014, uh, we had a, a myriad of content available online, but uh, there was no visibility uh, which was required. So Ministry of Education, or formerly called as MHRD, uh, the vision was uh, the vision the, uh, 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 the government had at that time is to provide quality uh, lab education uh, alternative and online digital alternative uh, to the engineering uh, students. Well, uh, so the only way this could have been done is to uh, have a very strong outreach program. Way back in 2014, uh, all the consortium partners the IITs and the Freeman Institutes. We started uh, the journey of outreach. And uh, I still remember that uh, we used to go uh, uh, travel physically uh, to locations um, uh, in the remotest part of Maharashtra and other Western uh, uh, India and um, go and interact with the students, with the instructors, understand the ecosystem uh, the academic setup, uh, the challenges and the issues faced. And uh, uh, that helped us to groom the outreach program uh, in a better way. So, uh, so it is, it is uh, now that it has matured to a level that uh, uh, the outreach program of held by IIT Bombay uh, is going very strong. Uh, right from the uh, west of the uh, the western part of the country and the uh, northern part, uh, so Jammu and Kashmir, uh, is totally covered uh, by IIT Bombay. We have more than 300 rural centers uh, who are uh, continuously helping us to uh, uh, reach out to this virtual labs concept to the uh, community, the students and instructors. And uh, so let me tell you that we have uh, uh, more than uh, 2,000 workshops so far uh, with help of our partners, uh, and we call them as a nodal center. So a nodal center is therefore a very important, uh, uh, plays a very important role in this outreach program. And uh, for IIT Bombay, every nodal center is uh, very important. Uh, and uh, about this nodal center, the uh, centers who have uh, achieved excellence in the outreach program. Uh, they, they become the regional centers and regional centers, they uh, work very closely with IIT Bombay, They're helping us to reach out to uh, various colleges across the uh, country. So uh, the outreach program uh, is built in a way that it, uh, uh, it, it spreads across uh, within various departments within your institutes uh, uh, and uh, it uh, kind of, you know, uh, gives a flavor of how the digital content uh, can help to enhance the uh, uh, 
the quality of uh, learning uh, to the uh, students. Uh, well, uh, so virtual labs uh, has been fundamentally built for uh, the engineering fraternity, but uh, uh, as you know that uh, polytechnics uh, have very good foundation and they, uh, many of them actually uh, they come and uh, join the engineering uh, uh, disciplines, engineering uh, degree programs. And uh, uh, a lot of, lot of hands-on experiences, in, in fact, uh, at a very early stage, uh, uh, is, is uh, uh, taken by the polytechnic students. So there uh, we feel that virtual labs uh, has a huge scope uh, to penetrate and uh, help the, uh, the academic community. Well, uh, for that we uh, need your help and support. Uh, well, by the way, uh, all the speakers that you had today uh, were at some point, uh, some time back, they were uh, uh, just a faculty uh, working, uh, you know, constantly to help students, uh, just like you, all of you. Uh, uh, but they took an initiative uh, that they will uh, put in extra effort and uh, help IIT Bombay to uh, uh, roll out this virtual labs program uh, within their department and also within their entire institute. So once once you're a nodal center and you're a nodal coordinator, uh, the responsibility of spreading the virtual labs uh, is across the across your institute, not just your department or uh, to your students. So uh, all of the uh, speakers today, which we had, uh, we call them as leaders. We don't uh, uh, just, they are not just nodal coordinators for us or regional coordinators for us. Uh, they have been actively helping us in uh, crafting this uh, outreach program. Uh, the way semester is planned, uh, syllabus gap is, uh, uh, you know, uh, filled uh, before the semester starts and, uh, you know, the uh, mapping of what is to be, uh, which virtual lab is to be given to the students uh, with the team of uh, department coordinators. So all this process, uh, including the feedback uh, of the, uh, you know, workshops and submission of reports. All, has, all of this has come from uh, uh, the, uh, the speakers which were, you know, which are, uh, which um, held the sessions for you today. So uh, what I mean to say is that we actively engage with the uh, nodal centers. So it all depends on how much effort you take. The more you effort you take, uh, you, the better support you also get uh, from us. So it's a, uh, it's a, it's a mutual, uh, uh, benefit that we uh, get from uh, spreading the virtual labs. So uh, after today's uh, day-long sessions, uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, many of you must be, uh, uh, you know, moved uh, and motivated uh, to take this virtual labs concept to your uh, polytechnic institutes, uh, for which uh, uh, you can reach out to your uh, uh, nearest uh, nodal center or uh, to the speakers and the organizers of this workshops today. And uh, uh, you can express your interest to become a nodal center. It is very important first to, uh, once you become a nodal center, to first uh, map your syllabus with the uh, list of experiments that are available currently on Virtual Labs uh, platform. Uh, as I told you before that, uh, these are fundamentally meant for the engineering curriculum, but there is a lot of overlap between the polytechnic and the uh, engineering program. So I'm pretty sure that uh, a lot will be common to uh, your students and your, your academic community. So uh, once you become a nodal center, uh, as a nodal coordinator, you take the leadership uh, and uh, form inter-department uh, network, uh, assign uh, department coordinators, uh, have meetings with them, uh, talk out the uh, uh, plan. We call this as a pl uh, planner. So you you prepare a planner semester uh, before before the semester begins. Uh, that what activities can be taken uh, for the students in the semester with virtual labs. Once that is done, then uh, the task becomes pretty easy because now you are not just alone as a coordinator uh, to execute this program you get the support from the uh, various department heads uh, may not be a head they can be uh, any active faculty and uh, 
And uh, we have seen that uh, institutes who have followed this model have benefited to a much extent. In fact, uh, they have uh, grown and uh, reached to a uh, level of you know, a regional center. So, uh, and then uh, engage with your students, uh, uh, understand uh, what is uh, that uh, they need, uh, take their feedback and uh, share with us. Do, do connect with us and uh, your regional centers. And uh, we, we look to have uh, engagement with you uh, uh, beyond just the outreach program. But uh, outreach is the very first thing uh, that is important because unless and until uh, your uh, colleagues and your students uh, do not understand what is virtual labs. Uh, uh, and, and the only way to do is uh, to hold workshops and uh, uh, you know, such activities. So unless that is done, it is uh, uh, very difficult to go ahead and uh, try out something else. So as Professor Norona in his talk mentioned about uh, the, uh, the innovation and uh, other such things that we have in a pipeline. So there's a lot uh, uh, waiting for you uh, beyond this uh, outreach uh, sessions. So uh, uh, we, we hope that we'll get your active support uh, do reach out to us, uh, express your interest to become Nodal Center, uh, engage with uh, us, uh, engage with the students, uh, share your uh, feedbacks, and uh, uh, let us make this program uh, a new success uh, for the Polytechnic as well. And uh, this all starts with uh, uh, efforts from you. And uh, feel free to reach out to us for uh, any kind of support. Uh, so once again, with that, uh, I thank uh, all of you uh, for uh, giving your time and attending this uh, program. And uh, we hope to get uh, your continued support in the uh, days to come. Uh, I thank all the organizers and the speakers uh, who were there uh, for this day and uh, all the uh, support uh, people from the, uh, right from the student uh, community and the uh, and the, and the academic community, the teachers community, who have helped organize this program. Uh, I also thank, uh, on behalf of Professor Narona and my team, uh, Virtual Labs at IIT Bombay. And uh, uh, yeah, thank you and have a good day. Hello everyone. My name is Anushka Khuspe. And to begin with, I would like to give a short introduction about myself. I am a second year engineering student at Pune Vidyati Girls College of Engineering and Technology and GKPIM Pune. I have been a member of the Virtual Labs community since 2021. I have also been certified by IIT Bombay for HTML. I was one of the resource persons for the web development national event held by PVG CUET. In addition to this, I had participated and secured first place in Front End Web Development Hackathon 2021 held by ESL IIIT Pune. Now I take this opportunity to introduce Professor Ajit Narendra Gidam Sir, who is a lecturer at the Department of Computer Engineering. Sir has completed his Bachelor's in Computer Technology and Master's in Computer Engineering, Specialization in Computer Networks. He has a teaching experience of 17 years. His publications in international journals include a paper on hybrid crypto system approach using secure intrusion detection system, secondly a review paper on preventing forced acknowledgement and thirdly a paper on centralized secure routing protocol for mobile ad hoc network. His publications in conference include property evaluation system, multi-platform car game controller and driving simulator, anti-theft mobile tracking system, system to identify and define security threats to the users about the illegitimate installed applications and lastly image watermarking using QR code. Book published is Relational Database Management System by Vision Publication in 2010. Sir has also attended various workshops and courses such as Ethical Hacking and Information Security, Linux Basics to Applications Clustering, 4G Technology, Research Opportunities in distributed computing, network simulation, etc. Sir's professional membership include Life Membership of Institution of Engineers India, Life Membership of IST, 
Faculty Advisor IES Students Chapter, Secretary Cum Treasurer IST Faculty Chapter, and VLAB Nodal Coordinator. Sir, so special achievement in include he has been nominated for election of three representative All India Students Committee AISC in 2018 to 19. He has also been nominated for the election of the three representative AISC in 2019 to 20 for Maharashtra State. CWIT invited him as a chief guest on 20th November 2019 for IEI Students Chapter inaugural function. Recently nominated and he has been contesting election of IEI Local Center Pune, which will be held between 26th September 2021 to 25th October 2021. With this brief introduction, I request Sir to say a few words. Good afternoon, one and all present here, honorable guests, respected dignitaries, and dear all political faculty participants. It gives me an immense pleasure to take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks for this outreach workshop to dignitaries assembled here and would like to thank our chief guest, Dr. Santosh Naroha, principal investigator, virtual lab IIT Bombay, Sri Pushpadeep Mishra, project manager, Virtual Lab IIT Bombay, who honored this outreach workshop with their inspirational thoughts and knowledge. I take this opportunity to especially express deep regards and gratitude to the Virtual Lab Regional Coordinators, Professor Kanuja Kataukar, Madam, who take this initiative to for organizing such a wonderful workshop for the Polytechnic faculties. I would like to thank all the resource persons from various regional center, MSU Baroda, MIT Marathwada, DYP Navi Mumbai, who explained the virtual lab experiment very well. I would like to thank to all the nodal coordinators to take step for this community efforts of rollout virtual lab to the faculties of all disciplines of polytechnic institutes. I would like to thank all the principals from various polytechnic colleges, faculty members, participants, and last but surely not the least, I thank you all technical support team for helping us webcast and streaming this event to YouTube channel making this outreach workshop grand success. Once again, I thank you all for being with us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you all.